Good evening, students. Welcome you all to this session for paper three B, Goods and Services Tax for the Intermediate Level. And as in the last class, we had discussed about the first chapter, GST in India and introduction, and the basics of uh, the GST law. Now today we will start our session from where we had left in the earlier session. In fact, in last session we had discussed a bit about the syllabus, section wise weightage, skill wise weightages. and a, uh, an overview of the new scheme for this particular paper paper 3b goods and services tax so today we'll be focusing only on the technical discussion and uh, we'll try to complete uh, as much portion as we can we'll complete chapter 1 goods uh, gst in india and introduction and we'll uh, start with chapter 2 supply under gst okay so let us start with the presentation Just a minute. Hope the presentation is visible to you all. Now, so we will start with the. I had planned to take some questions today, but uh, I will take them at the end if time permits. and before that we'll start with the technical discussion so we'll skip the questions for the timing and we'll go to the discussion from where we had left the session that day yes this is the legislative framework of gst in fact that session we, uh, that this we had discussed in great detail that day but uh, first of all i have to i will give you a quick revision of this particular uh, legal framework because this has a connection with what we are going to discuss today today we are going to discuss the constitutional of gst constitutional because of gst and the relevant changes in the constitutional provisions which were made because of the introduction of gst so for understanding that first of all we should once again have a clear idea of the gst legislative framework then only you will be able to appreciate those amendments in a better manner so let us quickly recapitulate the legislative framework gst under gst the tax is levied on two types of supplies one is intra state supply and one another one is inter state supply now intra state supply is a supply where the location of supplier and place of supply are in one single state or in one single union territory so only one union territory or one single state is associated or involved in this particular transaction for example a supplier in bihar has supplied goods to a buyer in bihar state involved is bihar had it been uh, ladakh suppose the supplier in ladakh has sold goods to a buyer in ladakh then also it would have been an intra state transaction only one single union territory or a single state is involved in the transaction then second is the interstate supply in interstate supply the location of supplier and place of supply as i already told you in the previous session that place of supply is the place where the supply is being consumed and the location of supplier is where the supplier is located so both these things are located in two different states so here two states are involved supplier is at one place and the supply has been consumed at an, in another state so two different states or there can be two different union territories and third case could be one state and one union territory so goods have supply have been supplied from one state to another union territory so two states or two union territories or one state and a, a union territory are involved then it is an interstate transaction for example the goods have been supplied from bihar to delhi two states are involved it is an interstate transaction now in case of an intra state supply what is levied is cgst plus sgst in case the uh, 
interstate sub intrastate supply is between a state or a union territory with state legislature then it will be an cgst and sgst will be levied but in case the intrastate supply is within a single union territory then cgst plus utgst will be levied and in case of the interstate supply it is always igst which is levied now which is the uh, authority which is levying this particular tax cgst is levied by the central government igst is also levied by the central government and the sgst is levied by the state government or union territory with sgst is levied by the state government or the union territory with legislature and utgst is levied by the union territories without legislature we had discussed in detail what is union territory with legislature what is union territory without legislature i will not repeat because otherwise we will not be able to complete today's topic but just to have a quick idea of interstate intrastate supply cgst sgst utgst who is collecting or levying that particular tax because it is important for understanding the constitutional provisions so hope this is clear to you that which uh, authority or which particular uh, union or uh, state is levying the particular tax and which is the legislation which is governing this particular tax cgst is governed by one legislation cgst act UTGST again one legislation UG UTGST Act IGST is governed by IGST Act and SGST is governed by different state legislations so separate GST legislations are there for every state and that is governing SGST Act so hope this is clear to you because now we'll move further to the constitutional provisions let me see some queries so uh, mayur is ask uh, mayur is asking for should we make notes for the session i would suggest that please go through the session attend the session carefully these ppts i would be sharing with you in case you want to note something for your understanding you can but i would uh, suggest all of you to focus more on understanding the concepts because thereafter you can uh, go back and refer the study material and you can go through all these concepts again in detail so after that you can prepare your notes that would be better but in case you feel that you ha you have a habit of noting whatever you feel that you are understanding you can do that it's up to you so um aisha aisha is asking for tips to study gst we'll share that aisha uh, course of the session interstate uh, interstate i hope it is clear to you nanshi is asking the topic of the session is taxable event yes nanshi topic is taxable event but since we were not able to complete gst in india and in introduction chapter 1 in last session so we are covering the remaining portion of that chapter and after that we'll start with chapter 2 that is taxable event supply yes the uh, anmol is asking please revise constitutional provision anmol i would be starting with constitutional provision once again i will give you an idea whatever we had done in the last class with regard to constitutional provision and thereafter we will discuss the other amendments in the constitution because of gst uh, introduction declared goods of special importance i am getting some queries for that that what is what are the declared goods of special importance under the central sales tax law certain goods there was a list of items around 14 items were there which had been declared as the goods of special importance there were special provisions with regard to the interstate sale of those goods but this these goods of special importance with the elimination of cst law with the with cst law being subsumed in gst this these goods of special importance has gone away because now everything has been merged into gst law supply from one union territory to another union territory is also an intra state supply pooja is asking so pooja hope this is clear to you compensation says surendran is asking to explain once again surendra i will try to explain it at the end of the session please bear with me so that i can cover the topics which are um, which i have listed for today i will try to complete them first but ne nevertheless i will try to explain compensation says at the end don't worry now um, this article now we are starting with article 248 so uh, but before that i will once again go through the give you an idea of the constitutional provision now what is important here is that any tax can be levied only when a power to 
levy that tax has been given by the constitution so constitution is the basic framework which gives power to a power to levy any tax so any tax which is beyond the which is for which the power is not given under constitution is ultra virus to the constitution and it is completely illegal and invalid it is null and void so if we have to levy any tax then the power to levy that tax should arise from the constitution to levy that tax that is the first point okay then uh, article 24 this is what article 265 says that no tax shall be levied without the power being given by the constitution article 245 says that the parliament shall make laws for parliament shall make cst means central sales tax which i just referred cst is central sales tax now parliament has the power to make laws for whole of the india because it is the union it is the center so center has a control over entire india and india being a federal state like like i discussed in, discussed in the last class that india is a unique federalism their center has more powers and how center has more powers this will be reflected in when we will be discussing the constitutional amendment provisions you will yourself feel that yes in india parliament has much more power than the states so parliament has a power to frame laws for whole of india because center has control over entire india it has to manage the affairs of the entire country plus states have the power to make laws with respect to their states only and in case any extra territorial jurisdiction is there anything which any international laws any cross border transactions have to be taxed like we do in income tax also in gst also we tax the transactions which are outside india sometimes they also have to be taxed within the in the, within the country then that power is also with the parliament those laws will also be made by the parliament that is why igst is levied by the parliament levied by the center when i say parliament when i say union central government it is one and the same that is we are referring to the center the uh, power at the center that is the parliament okay so parliament has the power to make laws for whole of india as well as uh, across india any cross border transactions any international transactions have to be the power to levy tax on those transactions is also lies or it also it also rests with the parliament that is that was what we discussed in last class we also discussed that uh, the now we have state we have center now how will it be decided that who will make laws on which subjects so there, there can be a conflict between them both of them will try to make laws on the on same subject so what constitution has done is it has made three different lists list 1 that is the union list it says that the it says that parliament will make list uh, will make laws on the subjects which are mentioned in list 1 that is the union list it has made a separate list for the parliament then it has made a separate list for state which is called state list or list 2 on which this in which the subject matter on which states will make the laws has been listed then there is a common list that is called the concurrent list on in which the subject matters which are listed on those subject matters both center and states can make the laws so this is the these are the three list where clear delineation clear segregation of the powers of parliament and uh, states or center and states is there to make the laws now again after that so there could be some other um, areas where the laws have to be made now what do those areas can be there could be a case that certain areas while when the law makers were making the constitution they could not foresee or some areas which have cropped up afterwards because of the change in the economical situation technological advancements uh, um, political changes and then international developments so there can be some other areas which they might not have thought of at that time that they these also these areas could also be there on which we have to make laws we have to make certain legislations with regard to that so for that which they could not foresee at that time but they could foresee that such circumstances can occur that they have to make laws for such areas such uh, matters which they have not yet thought of so for that they gave parliament the residuary power they said if any such thing is there which we are not able to think of today but it can arise at a later point of time then the power to make those laws laws make laws on those subjects will rest with the parliament so parliament makes laws on union uh, on the subjects mentioned in union list subjects mentioned in concurrent list now parliament can make laws on all those subjects which are not there in state list but which have arisen afterwards 
so it can make laws on that also that is called residuary power of legislation now in this particular article there has been an amendment which says that subject to article 246 say the parliament has this exclusive power that means now when the parliament has got a power to make anything which is not there in unions list and concurrent list power is subject to article 246a that means the because article 246 says, says that the state has the power to levy gst as well as center has the power to levy gst so if somebody says that it is not coming in state list and uh, the gst is not coming in state list so some uh, and students please wait for a minute i have to pause the class for a Yes, let's continue with the class. So, uh, this was the residuary power. So now, what this amendment means when we say subject to Article Two Forty Six A, this residuary power is now granted. It means that in case there is a conflict between the power to make laws with regard to GST law and with regard to the residuary power of the Parliament, then in that case, the Article Two Forty Six A provisions will prevail. That means the Parliament, the uh, division of powers or distribution of power between centre and state, as laid down in Article Two Forty Six A, will prevail, and these residuary powers will not work in that case. For GST, they will not work. So this is what this article has been amended for. Okay. Now, second is Article Two Forty Nine and Two Fifty. Article Two Forty Nine and Two Fifty. What they say is that in case there is an emergency in the uh, country. or some issue is there for which there is a uh, of some some issue of national interest is there and for which parliament feels that it should legislate or formulate laws which are listed in the state uh, list and what is the reason for that because they want to have uniform laws within the country in such a situation where there is a, a proclamation of emergency or there is a matter of national interest which they feel that the Uh, government the parliament should make laws for the state matters also in order to ensure uniformity across india then in that case they have been granted such power but only thing is they have to pass they have to get a resolution passed by the rajya sabha by uh, which is supported by not less than 2/3 of the majority 2/3 of the members present and voting so in case this resolution is passed then parliament can make laws on the state matters also in now this has also been Uh, updated or amended this article these two articles have been amended and they say that this power has been extended by the parliament to make laws with respect to gst also so now they can make laws with respect to gst also so any any matter listed in state list because that is not within their purview in case of gst you know that there are separate powers to state that state and center both can make laws but in such a in a situation of emergency or in a situation where the government feels that it is in the in, it is in the national interest it is in public interest that they should make laws for the uh, on behalf of state also then they can extend this this power has been extended of article 249 and article 250 with respect to gst also they can make laws let me see some queries uh, before moving further uh 
um yes so constitutional provisions i have revised goods of special importance i have told if igst is levied by central government how state will get revenue of igst uh man lodari is asking now man you will get your response uh, during the course of the session because this is one of the article uh, specifies and uh, one student is saying your voice is lagging so if in case it is so hello uh, in case my voice is breaking please let me know through your uh, everybody is saying actually i took took a break but in case it's which i have not shared the screen i suppose okay yes i forgot to share the screen uh, let me share the screen okay now uh, hope i have shared the screen hope the screen is avail uh, is visible to you all and in case you are not able to uh, see the screen please let me know or my voice is uh, breaking or some issue is there please let me know okay voice is clear now i hope ppt is also visible to all of you okay So two forty eight, I have explained that residuary powers are subject to Article two forty six A. I am once again repeating because now slide is visible to you and you can correlate what I was actually saying. That residuary powers, Parliament has now the power to make laws with respect to uh, this any matter not enumerated to state in in state list, concurrent list, but still it in case of Article two forty six A, Article two forty six A is going to prevail. then article 249 and 250 i told you that in case of emergency in case of national interest parliament can make laws with respect to matters listed in state list as well as uh, the whatever matter of gst has been covered in article 246a remember gst is levied under article 246a so it can the power has been extended to parliament to make laws with respect to gst also now we'll cover the next uh, article only after i take some of your queries or i see none of your queries are unanswered okay so i hope um this goods of special importance is clear to you aisha is asking is this topic important in questions expected from this topic constitutional provisions aisha is definitely important and you all should be aware of aware of that in order to understand the law in a better manner illustrations on cgst sgst and igst if possible i will be taking them through by way of questions at the end of the session you will get a clear cut idea but still i think the legislative framework which i explained to you would give would have given you an idea that in case of intra state transaction cgst plus sgst normally will be levied in case of inter state transaction igst would be levied center can't interfere in state list that is true but then you we have residuary power we have this uh, special powers given under section 249 and 250 and uh, these three lists are in article 246 yeah that is true aisha that that 246a is the set uh, article for uh, goods and service tax concurrent list is uh, pavitra is asking concurrent list concurrent list pavitra is the list where matters relating to both center and state have been list that, that means subject matter on which both center and state can make the laws that is the concurrent list okay 246 okay 246 says that how the laws will be made by the center and the state it gives separate powers to state and separate powers to center it says that it has list and this these three list which i was talking about union list state list and concurrent list they are given as a schedule in the seventh schedule to article uh, in seventh schedule to the constitution and it is a part of article 246 only article 246 says that whatever is mentioned in these schedules as per that only center and state will make the laws so one list is exclusively for center one list is exclusively for state and third list is for both of them both of them can make laws that is the concurrent list on concurrent list both state and center can make the laws article numbers you need not remember varuni you only need to know the provision mr lokesh is uh, lokesh please uh, repeat your query which you want to ask
yeah um swati is saying that if i have strike on of anything that means it has been removed yes swati now we'll i will come to this article now and then you will understand that what i actually want to say article 268 amended duties levied by the union but collected and appropriated by the state now article 268 earlier it said that the stamp duty and duties of excise on medicinal and toilet preparations these two duties they would be levied by central government but they would be collected by the state in which uh, in in case these duties are levied without any uni- within any union territory in case of union territory it will be collected by the center in case it is levied in any state then it will be uh, then it will be collected by the state this used to happen in case of the central sales tax also earlier but i will not go through in that detail this is happening in case of stamp duty and duties of excise on medicinal and toilet preparation stamp duty is a duty which is levied on the registration of any document for example you are registering any property any shares so that on that stamp duty is generally levied now this stamp duty is levied by center it is collected by the states or union territories wherever it is being levied but in case of the duties of excise on medicinal and toilet preparation earlier it was levied by center and collected by states or union territories now this has been removed from this particular article because if you remember in last class we had done that duties of excise on medicinal and toilet preparations is now subsumed in gst so there is no need for this particular article whatever is ha- whatever is uh, being uh, done under the gst law framework that will be taken that will take care of duties of excise on medicinal and toilet preparations also okay then the next oh. sorry i moved to the first last slide just a minute i'm once again sharing the screen yeah so this is article 268 now we come to the next point next article which has been amended and that is now this says that the because why this duty of excise and uh, on medicinal and toilet preparation has been removed because it is subsumed in gst article 268a now actually under service tax law service tax was being levied under entry 97 of the concurrent list but it was supposed to be levied under a separate entry 92c of the union list which was to be inserted and for that a new article was introduced article 268a but that could never happen because service tax continued to be levied under article 97 of the under entry 97 of the uh, concurrent list and this separate, uh, separate entry 92c never came into existence so this article 268a when service tax has been discontinued and it has been subsumed in gst so this article also has been omitted this is a consequential amendment you can say because of the service tax being subsumed in gst article 268 is no more required it has been omitted you just need to know the provisions and uh, you need not focus on the you need not focus on the article numbers or uh, the previous provisions you should know what is the updated or amended position of these articles which has an amendment which has undertaken because of the introduction of gst article 269a now this is an important article this article says the levy and collection of gst on interstate supplies now uh, this article lays down the provision regarding the how gst has to be le- uh, levied and collected on the interstate supply but you know that uh, as of now with so many discussion you must be clear that the 
Article 269A provides that IGST has to be levied on the interstate supplies. Now, this and uh, IGST, I already told you, shall be levied by the center or levied by the government of India. But how it will be apportioned, which one of the students has just asked also that it is okay, it is collected by center. But how it will be apportioned between states and center? Why? Because IGST is a combination of cent CGST and SGST. Center and state law ka, state tax ka combination hai IGST. So it has to be apportioned between state and center. When this tax has portion of central, central tax as well as state tax, so it has to be apportioned to both of them. Usko aadha aadha usko divide karna and, uh, or we have to divide it as per the uh, portion which belongs to center and the portion which belongs to state. So how will that be done? So this article says, first thing it says that on interstate transactions, interstate supplies, IGST, will, uh, send, uh, the parliament will make the uh, laws and parliament will collect and levy the, uh, levy the IGST. GST on interstate supplies is IGST. We had done that. It shall be levied and collected by government of India. After collection, it will be apportioned between union and states. It shall be apportioned between center and states in a manner which will be provided by parliament again. Now, this will be apportioned by the, this apportionment will be decided by the parliament. They will recommend a manner how it has to be apportioned. Now, this has already been, in fact, this was the article which, uh, which says that it has to be decided by the parliament. Parliament has already decided under IGST Act, there is a specific section, section 17, which has been inserted. But that is not relevant for the intermediate students. You, you only have to know that, yes, there is a mechanism through which the IGST is apportioned between center and states. Okay. So there are separate rules also for this apportionment. There is a separate section in IGST Act, but that is not relevant. We just have to know that, yes, it is apportioned appropriately between center and state. Okay. And any import transaction is also deemed as interstate supply. This is also what this article provides. Now, important thing is that, you know, CGST, whatever CGST tax the government is collecting, central tax, it is being credited to the Consolidated Fund of India. And whatever SGST portion government is collecting, being called of state. Now, what is Consolidated Fund of India? It is a kind of bank account of the central government, Consolidated Fund of India. Pure India ki baat ho rahi hai, pure India ka ek Consolidated Fund, it means it belongs to center. It is like a bank account of center. Center's entire revenue will come to Consolidated Fund of India. And whatever expenses center has to make, it will go from this Consolidated Fund only. Same way it works for states. States ka bank account hai to Consolidated Fund of States. Uska naam hoga. And that whatever revenue is coming to the states, it is in Consolidated Fund of States. And whatever expenditure it has to do, it will go from there. So, isile CGST tax or IGST, uh, CGST or SGST, Dono consolidated fund of India or states may respectively apportion kar diye jate hain, de diye jate hain. Aap, whatever CGST you are collecting, that will be credited or that will go to the consolidated fund of India. Whatever SGST government is collecting, that will go to state fund, consolidated fund of states. But again, issue came for IGST. IGST is, uh, is, has CGST plus SGST portion. So, that goes to that has to be apportioned between center and state that we have just seen. So for that, a mechanism has been derived. Okay. Now another issue comes. So and that is the the that issue is that we have just seen. Achha, we have just seen the legislative framework of uh, GST. Apart from that, in last class, I had discussed about ITC also. That the tax paid on inputs is available as a credit for payment of output tax or tax paid on inward supplies receipts is available for payment of tax on outward supplies. Okay, jo aap purchase karoge, us pe jo aap tax pay karoge, wo aap apne sale ke upar, jab aap tax pay karna hai, uske liye use kar sakte ho, utna aap set off kar sakte ho. To in case we are using, we are setting off IGST for the payment of SGST. Hame SGST ki payment karni thi, और उसके लिए हमारे पास IGST का क्रेडिट पड़ा हुआ था तो हमने SGST की पेमेंट के लिए IGST का क्रेडिट यूज कर लिया यू ऑलवेज हैव टू रिमेंबर कि IGST जैसे ही हम सुनेंगे वी हैव टू थिंक कि स्टेट की सेंटर uh, की बात हो रही है IGST मतलब सेंटर क्योंकि सेंटर कलेक्ट करता है सेंटर के पास होता है बाद में अपोर्शन होता है बट जब तक वो IGST है तब तक वो सेंटर का इट इज अ सेंटर इट बिलोंग्स टू सेंटर 
when we say when we hear about sgst sgst sunte hi hamare dimag mein aana chahiye state ki baat ho rahi hai ye state ke paas jayega to agar kisi sgst ko pay karne ke liye hum igst ka credit use karte hain to wo ab aapka jo igst amount jitna humne sgst ke liye use kar liya that will not go to the consolidated fund of india that will go to the consolidated fund of that particular state जितना अमाउंट आपने आईजीएसटी का यूज कर लिया एसजीएसटी को पे करने के लिए उतना अमाउंट कॉन्सोलिडेटेड फंड ऑफ इंडिया में नहीं जाएगा वो उस रिस्पेक्टिव स्टेट में जाएगा इस स्लाइड में थोड़ा सा मिक्स करके लिखा गया तो आप जो मैं बोल रही हूँ वो सुनिएगा अभी इसको मत पढ़िए स्लाइड को उसी तरह से वाइस वर्षा इफ एन इफ एस इज यूज फॉर पेमेंट ऑफ आई अगर आप स्टेट का टैक्स यूज कर रहे हो सेंटर का टैक्स पे करने के लिए देन इट बिकम्स अब एस जी एस टी हैज बीन यूज फॉर पेमेंट ऑफ आई जी एस टी तो दैट बिकम्स अब फाइनली किसके पास गया एस जी एस टी से हमने उसे आई जी एस टी में कन्वर्ट कर दिया एस जी एस टी को क्रेडिट यूज कर लिया आई जी एस टी को पे करने के लिए तो इट फाइनली बिकेम आई जी एस टी आई जी एस टी इज अ सेंटर टैक्स तो वो कॉन्सोलिडेटेड फंड ऑफ इंडिया में जाएगा फिर वो कॉन्सोलिडेटेड फंड ऑफ स्टेट में नहीं जाएगा मैं एक बार फिर से रिपीट कर रही हूँ अगर इफ यू आर यूजिंग क्रेडिट ऑफ आई जी एस टी फॉर पेमेंट ऑफ एस जी एस टी then that amount will go to consolidated fund of states because आपने आई जी एस टी को एस जी एस टी बना दिया तो अब वो कॉन्सोलिडेटेड फंड ऑफ स्टेट में जाएगा वाइस वर्षा इफ एस जी एस टी क्रेडिट इज यूज फॉर पेमेंट ऑफ आई जी एस टी देन दिस अमाउंट विल गो टू कॉन्सोलिडेटेड फंड ऑफ इंडिया क्योंकि आई जी एस टी जो है वो सेंटर का है लेकिन उसके बाद वो उसको अपोर्शन भी करेंगे वो उसको पहले डालने से पहले कॉन्सोलिडेटेड फंड ऑफ इंडिया में से पहले आईजीएसटी विल बी अपोर्शन एंड देन रिस्पेक्टिव पोर्शन विल गो टू द रिस्पेक्टिव कॉन्सोलिडेटेड फंड्स पार्लियामेंट इज एम्पावर टू फॉर्मुलेट द प्रिंसिपल्स रिगार्डिंग प्लेस ऑफ सप्लाई एंड वेन सप्लाई ऑफ गुड्स और ऑफ सर्विसेज और बोथ अकर्स इन इंटर स्टेट ट्रेड और कॉमर्स प्लेस ऑफ सप्लाई के सारे प्रोविजन और प्रिंसिपल्स भी पार्लियामेंट ही फॉर्मुलेट करेगा और इंटर स्टेट ट्रेड और कॉमर्स वेन वेन कैन यू टर्म दैट अ पर्टिकुलर सप्लाई इज इन कोर्स ऑफ इंटर स्टेट ट्रेड और कॉमर्स दैट ऑल्सो विल बी दो लॉज विल ऑल्सो भी फ्रेम बाई दी पार्लियामेंट तो आई जी एस टी से रिलेटेड जो भी लॉज है प्लेस ऑफ सप्लाई से रिलेटेड जो भी प्रिंसिपल है दैट विल बी फॉर्मुलेटेड बाई दी पार्लियामेंट ओनली सो दिस इज वट सेक्शन आर्टिकल टू सिक्सटी नाइन लेज डाउन आर्टिकल टू सिक्सटी सिक्स अम्बडी इज आस्किंग आर्टिकल टू सिक्सटी सिक्स इज नॉट अमेंडेड बाई दी बिकॉज ऑफ दी जी एस टी लॉ introduction of gst law we are focusing only on those articles which have been amended by introduction of the gst law article 249 uh, himlata is asking please explain article 249 relating to two third of the members present and voting or any manner or any matter enumerated in cps article 249 says ki aapko agar if you want to give the power to center to make laws on the state issues then you have to first of all pass a resolution in the rajya sabha with two third majority that yes this kind of power should be given to the parliament because it is a matter of national interest or there is a uh, emergency which has been declared in the country in that case so uh, in case the emergency has been declared then this resolution is not required in fact but in case it is a matter of national interest and the rajya sabha feels that yes such kind of uh, powers should be given to the parliament to make laws on the state list also then two third majority Uh, by two third majority, a resolution has to be passed in the Rajya Sabha. Consequential provision means that because of a particular amendment, resultantly. Consequential means resultantly. Resultant amendment. मतलब आपकी एक amendment हुई उसकी वजह से अगर कोई दूसरी amendment हो रही है. Because of one amendment, some other amendment has to take place because so that this amendment can become true. That is called consequential amendment. एक अमेंडमेंट की वजह से जो दूसरी अमेंडमेंट करनी पड़ती है दैट इज द कॉन्सिक्वेंशियल अमेंडमेंट और कॉन्सिक्वेंशियल प्रोविजन इन टू सिक्सटी नाइन एवी एंड कलेक्शन ऑफ इंटर स्टेट सप्लाईज इंक्लूडिंग इम्पोर्ट इज यस यू आर राइट नागार्जुन टू सिक्सटी नाइन ए को एक बार हिंदी में मैं समझा देती हूँ इन इनपुट टैक्स क्रेडिट मैंने लास्ट क्लास में डिस्कस किया था कि जो आप टैक्स इनवर्ड सप्लाईज पे पे करते हो दैट कैन बी यूज फॉर पेमेंट ऑफ दउटवर्ड सप्लाई टैक्स ऑन आउटवर्ड सप्लाईज this will be discussed in detail in a separate chapter but for the timing you should know that yes this is how this is uh, credit works cgst goes to 
consolidated fund of india sgst goes to consolidated fund of states and igst is a portion between center and state and thereafter it goes to their respective funds आर्टिकल 266 लोकेश पूछ रहे हैं बार बार बट लोकेश उसमें कोई अमेंडमेंट नहीं है इसीलिए हमने वो डिस्कस नहीं किया दैट इज नॉट पार्ट ऑफ योर सिलेबस कॉम्पनसेशन सेस इज कलेक्टेड बाय दी सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट ओनली एंड कॉम्पनसेशन सेस में लास्ट में एक बार एक्सप्लेन करूंगी फिर से एस जी यूज फॉर सीजीएसटी पेमेंट अब्दुल पूछ रहे हैं अब्दुल अभी आपको इनको टैक्स क्रेडिट का पूरा मैकेनिज्म नहीं समझाया गया लेकिन एस जी और एस सी जी एस टी का क्रेडिट एक दूसरे के लिए यूज नहीं हो सकता बट अभी आपको मैं वो नहीं बताना चाहती बिकॉज यू विल गेट कंफ्यूज अभी सिंपल रखते हैं इसको जितना बताया जा रहा है अभी आप उसी तरह से क्रेडिट को समझो सो दैट इट विल बी इजी फॉर यू विच टैक्स इज लेविड ऑन इन एक्सपोर्ट्स एक्सपोर्ट्स के लिए सेपरेट प्रोविजन है टैक्स लगता है नहीं लगता है वैसे एक्सपोर्ट्स पे आई लगता है लेकिन बहुत सारा ऐसे भी हमारे लॉ में रिलैक्सेशन है कि टैक्स नहीं देना पड़ता बट प्लीज डोंट गो इन टू दैट आपके सिलेबस में एक्सपोर्ट इम्पोर्ट से रिलेटेड बहुत लिमिटेड प्रोविजन है टू द एक्सटेंट दे आर कवर्ड इन सिलेबस आई टी सी भाविका इज आस्किंग हाउ आई टी सी वर्क भाविका विल डू इट लेटर ऑन की हाउ आई टी सी वर्क बिकॉज अभी आपके लिए जितना रेलिवेंट है दैट आई है टू यू लेट्स कम टू आर्टिकल टू सेवेंटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेस टैक्स नाउ हाउ दी गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज टैक्स विल बी डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड बिटवीन सेंटर एंड स्टेट फॉर दैट Article 270 has been amended that this will be done by an order of the president. After Finance Commission will give the recommendations that how it has to be apportioned, this IGST, CGST, and SGST, whatever uh, taxes we are collecting, how it will be apportioned, uh, it will be distributed to states and center. That will be decided by Article 270. Article 271 it says that the um, Article two seventy one it empowers the parliament to increase any of the duties. So whatever duties it suppose it feels that yes there is a need to increase a particular duty a particular tax which has been referred in specific articles article two sixty nine and two seventy. But the this article has been amended to exclude GST from its purview. So article two seventy one cannot increase the duties or taxes which are called goods and services tax because this otherwise it would have become applicable on GST. But the law does not the lawmakers did not want this article to be implemented or to be extended to GST. So it has been ex specifically excluded from two seventy one. Two eighty six says that the Uh, it restrains the states from making laws for imposition of any tax on sale or purchase of goods which where the sale or purchase is taking place outside such state that means either in course of import or in course of export these st states could not make any tax it was there this provision was there in case in, in at the time of the central sales tax but now we do not use word sale or purchase in case of the so, uh, this gst we use the word supply so sale or purchase have been appropriately replaced by, with the word supply goods has been appropriately re replaced with goods or services or both because now it is a gst regime in case of the uh, vat and cst regime we used to refer to the terms sale and purchase we used to refer to the terms goods but now sale or purchase has been replaced with supply and say uh, the goods has been replaced with goods or services or both here the uh, the goods of special importance clause was there that has also been removed because we know that now there are no goods of special importance after the introduction of gst these are the consequential amendments because of the introduction of gst these amendments are being taken place now the most important clause is gst council gst council as i already told you in last class that the in 2016 september gst council was For, uh, formed and it is a what is gst council it is a joint forum, forum of center and states which recommend gst laws gst procedures anything relating to gst any clarification has to be there any procedure has to be prescribed forms everything is discussed in gst council it recommends to the government and then it becomes the law so president was empowered by the constitution 101st amendment act to constitute a joint forum of center and state and this joint forum is called gst council you must have heard gst council about gst council meetings in the news and you must have read in newspaper also almost every quarter or every six months this these meetings are held sometimes more than um, to more than a meeting is held in a quarter it depends on what type of changes government wants to bring so a meeting is held gst council consists of um, let me first tell you what is its composition 
GST Council consists of the, the chairperson of GST Council is the Union Finance Minister. So, Union Minister Ms. Nirmala Sitaraman, at present she is the chairperson of GST Council. Anybody who is the finance minister, he or she will be the chairperson or chairman. And then the Union Minister of State in charge of revenue or finance. So, Union Minister of Revenue or Finance will also be a member of this council. And every state will have one representative which they will nominate uh, on behalf of their state government. So it can be their finance minister, taxation minister, or any other minister also they can nominate for the purpose for representing them in that council. So it has a joint representation of all the states and center also. Then together they uh, take the decisions with respect to the uh, GST law. So this GST council will recommend the date on which tax shall be levied on petroleum and petroleum products, which has not yet been levied. It will establish the dispute resolution mechanism. Any dispute is there between center and states, between states or between center and a group of states. So all these kind of disputes, if any such type of disputes arise, it is resolved by GST council. Then uh, how the decisions are taken. So this, uh, first of all, in any meeting, at least half of the total members should be present. Then only that meeting shall be con can be convened because there is a quorum of half one, one half of the total number of members. Decision has to be taken by the two by three fourth of the weighted, weighted votes of the members present. So in and then they take the decision that whether any particular amendment, any particular clarification has to be given or not. After that, it comes in the it comes in the form of the official gadget or it comes in the form of the law. Now, what recommendations GST Council can give? So the recommendations that GST Council can give are first. Initially, it gave the recommendation regarding what taxes are to be subsumed in GST. This was the, these were its initial recommendations. Then it still recommends about exemptions. Initially, also it made a complete list of services and goods which are to be exempted from GST. Model GST laws were formulated by GST Council. Then how IGST has to be apportioned that is also done by the recommendation of the GST Council also only. Section seventeen and the GST settlement uh, this uh, settlement rules. They have been formulated by the recommendation of the GST Council. The rates of GST, they are time to time changed. They were recommended in, in the initial stage by this council only and any other matter which has been specified for this. This GST Council has specified the 11 states. It has notified 11 states as special category states. If you remember, we were many students were referring goods of special importance. So they were the goods which had some special provisions with regard to them. In GST law, we have special category states, special states. Some They have some special treatment. They are given some special treatment. So these states, they feel they require some handholding because of their geographical location, because of their political structure. And uh, they feel that they have special, uh, they require special attention. So these special, these 11 states were notified or these special, uh, these 11 states have been specified as special category states in this article itself article 279a that these are special category states they will and you will find that when you will uh, go through the law in further in subsequent classes you will find that yes there are specific provisions there are special provisions for these special category states not if not all then some of these special category states have special concessions special provisions and uh, for registration also they have a lower limit but not all uh, specific special category states have these relaxations. So as the government felt the need that yes, this particular state should get a concession, this particular state should have a relaxation in the taxation, uh, then they gave that special uh, uh, you know, treatment to that particular state. These are special category states. Then Article 368, the power of the parliament of to amend the constitution and procedure, therefore. Article 270, 370, 368 has been amended to include Article 279A also within its pulp. So at least two-third of the majority in each house of the parliament and ratification by at least half of the states. Once, uh, if, have, if we have to make any amendment in Article 279A, then how can we make it at least... In each house of the parliament, the, uh, this amendment has to be passed in by two-third of the majority, not by a simple majority. Then after that, at least half of the states have to ratify that particular amendment in Article 279A because GST Council is the most important body in the GST law. 
So if we have to make any change in the GST counts, uh, in the provision relating to GST council in the constitution, then we require a, uh, this amendment to be passed by in both the houses of the parliament with two-third majority plus half of the states have to ratify that amendment, then only that amendment will become effective. So with this, we come to an end in the constitutional provisions. But before that, I will see the queries. Aisha feels that we should make notes um, simultaneously side by side. Aisha, as you feel comfortable, in fact, this is an advice to all the students. If you feel you want to make notes simultaneously, it's up to you. You can make keep making your notes. No GST on petroleum. Rupesh is asking, no, uh, Rupesh, at present, there is no GST on um, petroleum and petroleum products. It has to be notified. It has to be uh, implemented or you can say uh, this uh, it has to be made effective on these petroleum products also, but from a date to be notified, which is not yet done. So maybe in future, we'll see that. In budget, specify GST rate on goods and services. Yes, but in budget also, these goods and services rates are changed. And throughout the year also through notification, rate notifications are amended and the rates of GST on goods and services are changed. Our special category state and special economic zones same? Akash is asking. No, Akash, they are not same. Special economic zones are actually, um, they are a kind of, uh, an, uh, you know, a territory within India, which is treated as a foreign territory, which is treated as something out, some place outside India for the purpose of taxation, for the purpose of benefits given uh, to these uh, zones. So anything which you, they are considered, uh, anything you are, uh, you know, selling in these special economic zones, they are considered as exports. You are given so many benefits and uh, for establishing your units there. So it is completely different. Special category states are, because special economic zone can be in any state where this particular zone has been, this area has been segregated for making special economic zone. But special category states have been, there are only 11 states which have been marked as special category states and they have been given special privileges for that. Okay, so it is not the same. It is completely different. Special category state is applicable to JNK also. Now it is a union territory. You are right, uh, Srinivasan. You have very well pointed out that it is a state, but article in the constitution, article 279 still says state of Jammu and Kashmir. We know that it has become a union territory and Ladakh has become a union territory. It is a union territory with legislature and Ladakh is without legislature. Uh, Bhavika, you do not have to remember all the articles. If you remember it, then it is very good, but you should first of all... Uh, you know, remember the provision which each article is providing. State uh, Nagarjun saying a state has weightage of vote one. Yes, there is a different weightage to the uh, vote of center and states when we are make, taking any decision in the uh, GST council. That is true. Aisha is saying if we make notes, we will proceed further and we will not be able to concentrate on the uh, topic so Aisha you have to um, you have to either you have to be very quick in making the notes or you can first listen in the class and after the class immediately after the class you can make notes or uh, very next day you can make the notes because this way you will be uh, the concepts will be fresh in your mind and you can make the notes on that so if this is suggested to every student you can do as per your um, convenience Please explain, Patro is asking, please explain seamless flow of credit. Patro, for seamless flow of credit, I have an illustration which is given in the in chapter one. I will take that. Quickly, I will take that because that will help you in understanding seamless flow of credit and also to some extent apportionment of IGST and SGST, CGST. So I will take you through that illustration and explain that. What type of taxes are uh, applicable on petroleum? In petroleum, the taxes which were levied before, pre in pre-GST regime, they are still being applicable, CST, VAT, excise. Subsidiary as well as special concession, Rupesh is asking. Rupesh, I am not able to get your query. Yes, Nagarjun is telling the weightage to central government and state government vote. That is true, Nagarjun, you are right. Can we set off ITC of CGST for paying SGST? No, Harish, you cannot set off CGST credit against SGST. Is ITC of CGST against SGST or vice versa, credit of SGST against CGST. But please don't get into this set off at present because it's a complete different arena. You will do it in the ITC class and please reserve this 
for that class you will better appreciate that provision if today you go into all these things you will not be able to understand the concept after doing it in itc class you can again come back to this article and you can see the correlation that yes whether it stands true or not but don't go into this for these special category states special threshold limits of aggregate turnover have been prescribed himlata you are right there is no legislature in jammu and kashmir there is a legislature in jammu jammu and kashmir is a union territory actually i showed but it has its own legislature mcq can be asked from these articles um, mcqs now from may 2024 onwards you will be having small scenario based mcqs you can have a big scenario and you can have you can have few mcqs based on that I and mean, there could be a case a small scenario is given to you and mcq based on that can be asked so you have to think if, if any scenario can be made on that but you have to see the um you have, so you should know the application of everything you are reading special category states i already explained that these states have very uh, different provisions or they have special treatment given to them while framing the laws like they have reg different registration limits for composition scheme they have different aggregate turnover because they have to be given some hand holding compensation says in mandi tax we'll do at the end of the class okay so uh, now let me take you to that example or which illustration which i was discussing that will help you in understanding the seamless flow of credit we have 5 minutes with us because i had planned to complete this chapter by 7 o'clock then we'll start with the supply chapter so before that let us quickly discuss that illustration yes this was the illustrate these were the two illustrations i was talking about which is there in the seamless flow of credit this explains the concept of the seamless flow of credit okay now what happens i will take you through these illustration and you will yourself understand the concept which i wish to explain you there are two illustrations in first illustration there are two intra state supplies there are two transactions one is by a to b and another is by b to c now a to b is since a is uh, it can be assumed to be a manufacturer so a does not have any credit available with him a has manufactured the goods and he is selling those goods to b okay this simple logic that uh, cgst and sgst has same rate and on an intra state transaction cgst and sgst is levied i think it is clear to all of you this much you have to remember that intra state transaction cgst and sgst has to be levied at the same rate in this case we have assumed the rate to be 9% each and in case of inter state transaction 18% simplicity for the sake of simplicity we have assumed same rate whatever supply is being undertaken we have taken the rate to be 18% or 9% in cgst and sgst when inter state transaction we will discuss rate will become 18% okay first of all so i said that in illustration 2 there are two supplies supply from a to b and supply from b to c both these supplies are intra state supplies that means they are being taken undertaken in a single state goods are being sold or supplies are being supplied from in the same state from one person to another so the value charged for the supply of goods and services value supplied in uh, charge for the supply is 10000 rupees now cgst will be 9% on this 10000 rupees similarly sgst of 9% will be charged on this 10000 rupees so total tax will become 900 cgst 900 sgst and price that will be charged by a to b will include this tax so 10000 plus 900 plus 900 that will become 11800 okay now what will happen this cgst of 900 will go to the center account the appropriate account of center <coughs> now appropriate account of central government we know that it is the consolidated fund of india and sgst 900 rupees will go to appropriate account of state government that is consolidated fund of state so this is clear i hope that these 
900 and 900 amounts will go to center and state account. We will not call consolidated funds now. We will call center account and state account because that would be easier for us to understand. So, uh, supply by A to B, the CGST and SGST will go to the respective governments. Now, second transaction. In second transaction, we are assuming that there is a value addition of 20% and the value which has been charged. Now, the this uh, cost of this particular goods to B will be 10,000 only because the credit of CGST and SGST is available. Since CGST and SGST can be set off against the outward supplies tax, therefore this does not become part of the cost. Because you have CGST or SGST ko apne outward supplies pe jo tax pe karna hai, usse set off kar lete ho, to wo aapki cost ka part nahi banta. Because wo to aapko aage uska credit mil jayega. To wo aapke liye cost nahi hai. Wo aapke liye ek aapko jo aapne credit ikhata kiya, aap aage usko use kar loge. To aapke liye cost hai jitna aapne uh, you have paid this out of sale price whatever you have paid for the value of the goods but tax will not become a part of your cost so 10,000 charge kiya gaya tha plus 1800 was tax value uh, or cost for B will be 10,000 we have applied 120 20% profit so the value now becomes 12,000 okay on that we have to apply again CGST and SGST because second transaction is also an intrastate transaction. Within the same state, B has also sold the goods to C. So now the tax will become 1080 and 1080. And the total price which B is charging from C is inclusive of this tax, which is 14,160 rupees. I hope to the, this point, everything is clear to all of you. Please let me know in the chat that hope you are clear with this concept. Now comes how the tax is being um, you know, deposited or being uh, apportioned to the respective state government and center. Okay. The total CGST which was pay payable in second case was 1080, out of which uh, this is C uh, amount has been paid by B to the government. So B has to pay a total CGST of 1080 rupees, out of which it used a credit of CGST of 900. So it will pay only 180 in cash to the central government. And similarly, for SGST payment of 1080 rupees, it will use the SGST credit of 900. You can see that this is the output tax, which is paying 1080. And this was the input tax, or you can say ITC of 900, which was available to him because uh, inward supplies was the 900 ka tax pay kiya tha. Rupees ka tax liability due ho gaya. To usne dono ko set off kar diya. For paying 1080 rupees, he utilized 900 rupees CGST. Similarly, for paying SGST of 1080, he utilized the SGST credit of 900. And this way, finally, he paid the tax of only 180 in CGST in cash and 180 SGST in cash. So, 1080 rupees ki liability may say 900 to credit se set off ho gaye aur 180 rupees usko cash me pay karne pade. CGST may be same ra, SGST may be same ra, kyuki same amount tha, same ITC available tha. This is the illustrate, this is the first case. Ab is case mein hum dete hain governments ko kaise a portion hua. Statement of revenue earned by central and state government. This is a very simple example kyuki interest rate tha, to do hi log involved the central or state ke paas clear clear amount ja ra hai. Pahli supply jo thi A to B wali, usme government ko, central government ko 900 rupees mele or state government ko 900 rupees mele. Second supply me, kyunki these 900 had been used by B for making payment to government. So, finally jo net amount government ke paas gaya, wo sir 180 gaya. Kyunki for this 900, the government, the credit of CGST itself has been used. CG, government ka, central government ke paise ko, central government ke liye hi use kiya gaya. See, 1080 rupees mein jo central ke liye ke paas due the jo dene the usme se 900 center ke account mein se lekar hi center ko diye gaye hain isliye we will not uh, there will be no exchange only 180 rupees will be additionally paid 900 pichli baar de diye the 180 abhi de diye 100 1080 rupees center ke paas aa gaye similarly in sgst 900 rupees first transaction mein de diye the jo additional 180 the that has been given because nine second transaction ke liye we have used a credit of earlier 900 paid. So, net of the final transaction, finally, central government and state government both have got their share of uh, tax of 1080 rupees. 
why they have got only 1080 and not 1080 plus 900 because we know that credit of the tax paid at the earlier stage is utilized under the GST law. So there is a seamless flow of credit. This illustrates seamless flow of credit. कि जितना credit आपने in first stage में pay किया, second stage में उसका पूरा credit मिल गया. So it ensures कि yes, there is a seamless flow of credit. Governments के पास कैसे पैसा जाएगा? जिसका जो share है, यहाँ पे बहुत simple था. Central government का जितना भी amount था, वो सीधे सीधे center के पास चला गया. State का state के पास चला गया. किसी को कि कुछ portion या कुछ transfer करने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ी, because both the transactions were intrastate transactions. Now we come to the Interstate transactions. Before that, I will see some queries and I have to see whether you are understanding the concept or not. Koi problem to me. Ashok is saying here it is 120%. 120% Ashok is saying that 10,000 ka 120% we have seen it. But we can do it like this. 10,000 ka pahle 20% nikalte, that would have amounted to 2,000. And then we would have added it to 10,000. So it will make 12,000. Directly we have done 120%. That means we have profit nikalne ke baad jo sale price aega, jo, uh, sorry, jo value aegi wo humne nikal liya hai. Thik hai. Re, Pratesh is telling net tax payable that is clear. Wo, everybody is saying that it is clear to them. Value added 2000, net tax payable is 360. Yes, so Pratesh you have understood the concept ki value added tax pay. Ye bhi samaj mein aata hai ki jo value add hui hai, wo 2000 add hui hai. Aur us pe jo tax banta hai 18%. 360 rupees finally wahi pay karna pad raha hai supplier B ko. So this uh, in, in a way it uh, helps you in understanding the value added concept also. The tax is only being paid on the value added. It's very good that yesterday I explained you that example and today you are yourself uh, understanding that how it is a value added tax. It is required to learn, is it required to learn provision and sections of GST if not how to answer questions. Mamta is asking, Mamta I will explain this after the session that you can write the sections and uh, notification numbers rules, but only if you know them for sure. Otherwise, first focus on the provisions because they are more important to go. Manufacturer uh, or first seller do not have any ITC. Bhavika is asking. No, Bhavika, because first uh, A, uh, A to B, in, in sale of A to B, A is the manufacturer. So, a, we are assuming for the sake of simplicity, manufacturer can also have credit. That is not an issue. But in order to have, because to start the chain, we have shown that A does not have any credit. A has only uh, sold the goods and he has paid the tax. You will not be asked uh, specific articles to write in the exam. You just have to know the provisions. Okay. Who is available for ITC? ITC is available to the recipient. Not to the buyer, who is, uh, sorry, not to the seller. I am buying some goods. I am the recipient. So I will take the ITC of the goods or services which I have received. We have to pay tax on sale of goods and services. That is true. B2C calculation is final tax paid. Yes. B2C calculation is the net tax paid. So in A to B, 900 tax, 900 tax is paid. And then net tax, that means incremental tax has been paid in B2C. Okay. So now we come to the next uh, illustration that is interstate sale. We have already exceeded 10 minutes, but I will try to rush through the next example illustration. Now in this illustration, one is the, uh, there are three transactions. First transaction is between X to A, which is an intrastate transaction. Second transaction is between A to B, which is an interstate transaction. And third transaction is between B to C, which is an intrastate transaction. So let us see. Uh, how this seamless flow of credit works when an interstate transaction is there. There, here you will understand that how the uh, amount of tax flows from one state to another state. How is it? How it goes to center, and after center it goes to state. So whenever a state is make, you, and you have to remember that particular concept that IGST that means center, SGST means state. That you have to remember. First transaction in state one, X is selling goods to A. Only single state is involved, intrastate transaction. If all things are similar to illustration one, that 10,000 amount is there and CGST and SGST of 900 each will be paid. 11,800 will be charged by X to A. And amount will uh, go to center and state respectively. In second transaction, now this is what we have to focus on. A sold the goods to B from state one to state two. It is an interstate transaction because two states are involved. Value addition is again 2000. So value of goods on which uh, sale value becomes 12,000. Now on this 
12,000, we have to compute IGST at the rate of 18% because IGST we have assumed 18% on interstate sale, we levy IGST. So IGST at the rate of 18% will be levied, that is 2160. And now total price which A will charge from B will be 1400 only. So you see the total amount of tax becomes is same as it was there in earlier example because IGST is what? It is a sum of CGST plus STST. But the this nomenclature IGST itself makes a lot of difference. See how let's see how it makes the difference. Now see how first of all we'll see how this IGST has been paid by A to government. Total IGST payable was 2160. It had a credit of CGST and SDST. It utilized that credit and the net amount was 360. This also must be clear to all of you. Now, how this IGST amount will go to the state? See, when we say CGST of 900 has been used for paying IGST, CGST is also center and IGST for the timing will be with the center only. It will go to center. We have to assume this because after that it will be, it will be apportioned. So since both these are centers and are levied by center, so there is no problem. Whatever CGST we are using for paying IGST, that will also go to center's account. But whatever SGST we are using for payment of IGST, that amount from earlier, this SGST amount of 900 would have gone to state account. Now, we are using it for payment of IGST. So it will convert to IGST and it will go to the center's account. This 900 state 2, uh, sorry, 900 rupees state 1 will transfer to the account, appropriate account of the center. So 900 rupees, the IGST charged on B of state 2 for supply of goods will be remitted by state 1 to the appropriate account of center, this 900 rupees. And state 1 will transfer 900 rupees of SGST credit to uh, central government, which it has utilized for payment of IGST. That means this will go to center in a uh, straight away, 900 rupees. And second 900 of SGST will be transferred to center because it is being used for payment of IGST. So state 1 will take 900 rupees from its pocket and it will pay to center. It will pay to the account of the center. When I say pocket, you should know that I'm talking about state account only. Okay. Uh, then the third transaction. Third transaction is B2C. B2C is again an intrastate transaction. So the value which was earlier charged was 12,000 rupees. Why we have taken 12,000? Because ITC we will not take. ITC amount is available as credit. So on 12,000, we will apply again 120%. That means 20% profit we will take and the value becomes 14,400. Now, since it is an intrastate transaction, we know that CGST and SGST has to be levied. So the CGST of 1296 and SGST of 1296 will be levied on this particular transaction and the total price charge will come out to be 16,992. Now, this is not important. What is important is how this CGST and SGST will be paid from the ITC amount. So for that, the next table explains it, that CGST payable was 1296. Now, in this case, what we have done is, we have utilized the IT, IGST credit for CGST. In fact, this is what ITC provisions also say, but don't go into that. You just remember that I have we have used IGST credit of 1296 for CGST. So CGST amount becomes nil because we had an IGST credit of 2160 in the earlier case. This was the entire IGST which was paid. So the credit of 2160 was available with uh, B and it used out of that 2160, it used 1296 for payment of CGST. Now it has to, it is uh, remaining, it is left with SGST. It has to pay 1296 of IGST also. But the credit which is left with B is only 864 rupees. So it has used the remaining credit of IGST for payment of SGST. And the net amount has to be paid in cash that is 432 rupees. Okay. So let us see which government has actually paid to whom. Now, uh, before that, let us see this CGST amount has been paid from IGST. So both of them are center's uh, amount. So they will go to center account. Uh, no adjustment is required. But here the SGST payable has to be has been paid by using IGST. So IGST must have been with center 
now it has to be paid to state 2 so this 864 rupees will be paid to state 2 because now it is being igst is being used for sgst payment so igst was with center now it will go to state and which state which is consuming that is state 2 now it is with state it will go to state 2 let us see this with the help of this revenue table this is for all the three transactions first is supply of goods or services by x to a so when x is selling goods to a 900 cgst 900 sgst was charged and it went to center and states account state 1 then when goods were sold by a to b additional 360 had to be uh, by a to b yes so additional 360 were to be paid in cash so that cash has gone to central government because it was an igst amount so this 360 was igst and it went straight to central government and in stage uh, in transaction 2 we had also noticed that the uh, state 1 has transferred 900 rupees to the center because sgst was being used for payment of igst so state 1 had uh, foregone its 900 rupees and it has given it to central government for payment of igst so 900 will be reduced from state state 1's account and it will go to central government then comes the third transaction that is B2C. In B2C, what cash we were paying, what uh, the amount which we paid in cash for SGST was 432. We had just seen in the above example. I will not uh, show you the above table again because it will uh, take out your, it will actually you will lose uh, this uh, connect with this example. So B2C, when we are uh, making the transaction, the cash amount was 432, which was paid for SGST. So this has straight away go to state 2. But the credit which we used was of IGST for payment of SGST. So IGST is center. Central will uh, forego its 864 rupees and it will pay it to state. So we have reduced it from center's account and we have given it to state 2. That is what we had just seen that it will go to state 2. So finally, in this table, what every state is getting is state 1 has lost all its amount. It has given it to center and after that center gave it to state 2. And state and center will get 1296, state will 2 will get 1296 which, is, which was actually supposed to be given to them because we have just seen that the CGST and SGST of 1296 was there. This CGST belonged to center and SGST belonged to state 2. So Finally, what the what each state got was this only that state two got one two nine six, state one got nothing, and central government got one two nine six. This is how seamless flow of credit is ensured under GST. Let me take the queries and let me see how much you understood. Can we say evaluated profit, evaluated as profit of the businessman? Yes, it is sometimes only profit element, uh, Sangeet, uh, Sangeet Vani. And sometimes it can be a profit element plus value addition also. Sometimes you are manufacturing and you are adding profit also. It can be both. So value addition can be profit, can be uh, more than that. Ma'am, how they are saying first stage of supplier does not have credit. It is for simplicity only we have taken that the first stage supplier does not have any credit. Purchase minus sales is equal to input tax credit. Um, Actually, input tax credit is what you have, what tax you have paid on the um purchases that is actually input tax credit because um, though it becomes a difference of purchase and sales only that is but purchase sales value and purchase value can be profit also no? so you cannot say it is uh, equal to ITC on purchase output GST and on sale input GST no Priyanka on purchase the GST which you are paying is input GST input matlab jo aapka Aapke inputs jo hai, us pe jo aap GST pay karte, that is input tax or jo aapka output hai, outward supplies and that is output GST. So jo aapki sale pe GST hai, that is out, output GST. Jo aapki purchases pe GST aap pay karo, that is input GST. In simple terms we call but otherwise uh, technical term to input tax credit, input tax hota hai. But out, chalo aap input GST bhi usko bol sakte ho. Aman is saying miss my queries. Aman please repeat your query. Rupesh saying intrastate system cost intrastate to state. Uh, please repeat your query to page. Point 3, Ashok is asking again. I will explain it once again. IGST can be settled once and in any portion between CGST and SGST. 
you are right shrinivasan that is the order of uh, setting of credit suman your questions are visible but please repeat them maybe i have missed them so mamta is asking to explain this chart in hindi mamta if time permits i will take it after the class at the end of the session i will take it i know it is a bit complicated i will explain it to you again rituraj is asking the state on which first sale was made will not get anything yes rituraj it is right because now it is being transferred to another state so whenever that is why the credit is seamless one state has to forego its share to give it to another state uh, as and when subsequent transactions are taking place this is how seamless credit is there uh, in every transaction the credit will keep on moving and that is what we say every state in every stage credit will pass on and that is why seamless flow of credit is there that at no stage even if two states three states are involved credit will not stop credit will keep on passing i will try to explain this example once again um, just third i think third uh, is third transaction is not very clear to students i will explain it once again and after that i will move to chapter 2 okay and in case you have queries you keep on posting i will take it at the end again so see in third transaction what was there is b to c it is an intra state transaction but the credit available at this stage with with b is igst credit remember this point credit of igst of 2160 is available with b after that b made an intra intra state transaction on which cgst and sgst of 12961296 12960 was payable now he had a credit of um, 2160 and he had to pay uh, 1296 plus 1296 as an output tax so how he paid it first of all his cgst payable was 1296 he utilized entire amount of uh, from the igst he used igst amount to pay the entire cgst amount and cgst payable becomes nil cgst payable nil ho gaya kyunki usne apne cgst ko pay karne ke liye igst ka credit use kar liya sara abhi lekin igst mein 864 rupees aur bache hue the to usne bache hue paise kiske liye use kar liye sgst ko pay karne ke liye lekin ab jitna use karne ke baad bhi ab sgst fir bhi pura pay nahi hua एस जी एस टी में फोर थर्टी टू रुपीज अभी बचे हुए थे तो उसने उसको कैश में पे कर दिया तो अब क्या हुआ कि उसने फाइनली अब हम जब इसका टेबल देखते हैं कि किसके पास कितने पैसे गए इस टेबल को देख के समझो इसी से आपको ऊपर वाली टेबल भी समझ आ जाएगी कि कैसे समझनी है सी जी एस टी के पे करने के लिए आई जी एस टी का क्रेडिट यूज किया यानी ये भी सेंटर टैक्स ये भी सेंटर टैक्स तो इसका मतलब ये हुआ कि सेंटर से सेंटर के पास पैसे गए तो सेंटर के पास ही रही लेकिन दूसरे वाले उसमें लेग में क्या हो रहा है एस जी एस टी को पे करने के लिए हमने आई जी एस टी यूज किया यानी हमने स्टेट को पे करने के लिए सेंटर का पैसा यूज किया है तो सेंटर को पैसे अपने निकाल के देने पड़ेंगे स्टेट को कितने एट सिक्सटी फोर ठीक है और बाकी बचा हुआ पैसे हमें बाकी बचे हुए टैक्स को हमें कैश में पे करना है अब आप एक बार ये टेबल देखो इसका सेकेंड ट्रांजेक्शन ही मैं डिस्कस कर रही हूँ इसी के बेसिस पे आप ये थर्ड ट्रांजेक्शन सॉरी थर्ड ट्रांजेक्शन ही मैं डिस्कस कर रही हूँ इसकी इसी के बेसिस पे आपको सेकंड भी फिर से समझ आ जाएगी आप एक बार दोबारा देख सकते हो बाद में देखो इसी ट्रांजेक्शन को समझो कि इस बी टू सी वाली जो थर्ड ट्रांजेक्शन थी उसमें कैश में कितने पैसे पे हुए फोर थर्टी और जो सेंटर ने सेंटर को पे करना था वो तो हमारा अलग पे हो गया क्योंकि सेंटर का पैसा सेंटर के पास ही रहा कहीं कुछ किसी को एक दूसरे को देना नहीं पड़ा वन टू नाइन सिक्स जो सीजीएसटी के लिए यूज किया वो वहीं के वहीं रहे लेकिन एट सिक्सटी फोर रुपीज जो हमने एसजीएसटी के लिए यूज करा आईजीएसटी वाला पैसा वो हमने सेंटर से लेके स्टेट को दे दिया एक तरह से तो हमने सेंटर का सेंटर में से एट लेस करके एट स्टेट टू में एड कर दिए उसके बाद जो ये तो आपका सिंपल था स्टेज वन में यानी ट्रांजेक्शन वन में तो नाइन हंड्रेड दोनों को अलग अलग मिल गए It came to an end. Transaction two में 360 कैश में पे करने थे आईजीएसटी के वो भी हमने दिखा दिया कि 360 सिक्सटी रुपीज आईजीएसटी के सेंटर के पास चले गए जो ट्रांजेक्शन टू में नाइन हंड्रेड रुपीज थे जो कि हमारे स्टेट वन ने जो कि पहले एस जी एस टी की फॉर्म में था वो आई जी एस टी के लिए यूज कर लिया तो स्टेट को सेंटर को देने पड़ेंगे उतने पैसे तो यहाँ से नाइन हंड्रेड रुपीज स्टेट के लेस हो गए स्टेट वन के और सेंटर के पास चले गए ये एक ट्रांजेक्शन ये एक जो मतलब कह सकते हैं ट्रांसफर ऑफ अमाउंट वो ट्रांजेक्शन टू की हुई और ट्रांजेक्शन थ्री हम फिर से समझ चुके हैं तो अब ये टोटल मिला के जब आपने नेट इफेक्ट देखा तो स्टेट टू के पास वन टू नाइन सिक्स का वो आ गया अमाउंट सेंटर के पास भी वन टू नाइन सिक्स आ गया और स्टेट वन से सब पैसे चले गए क्योंकि अब स्टेट वन के पास सारा क्रेडिट उसके स्टेट टू के पास आ चुका है 
और इस ट्रांजेक्शन से हमें समझ में आया कि हाँ क्रेडिट कहीं भी रुक नहीं रहा क्रेडिट इज सीमलेसली फ्लोइंग क्रेडिट इज नॉन इज नॉट स्टॉपिंग एट वन स्टेज जितना आप उसको आगे सेल करते जाएंगे क्रेडिट विल कीप ऑन फ्लोइंग क्रेडिट नॉट अवेलेबल देन जीएसटी एड इन कॉस्ट अगर किसी चीज का क्रेडिट अवेलेबल नहीं है तो जीएसटी उसका कॉस्ट मतलब जिस जिस भी चीज का क्रेडिट अवेलेबल नहीं है देन इट कैन बी एडेड इन द कॉस्ट उतना पोर्शन एड हो जाएगा हिंदी में भाविका मैंने थोड़ा समझाया है बाकी आई विल टेक इट एट दी एंड अगर हो पाएगा तो आईजीएसटी uh, का अमाउंट भी सीजीएसटी और एसजीएसटी में डिस्ट्रीब्यूट होता है आईजीएसटी का अमाउंट फाइनली जब होता है तो वो पोर्शन होता है सीजीएसटी और एसजीएसटी में लेकिन जाता पहले सेंटर के पास है तो अभी जो हमने देखा वो क्लियरिंग मैकेनिज्म है कि किस कहाँ कहाँ से पैसे फ्लो हो रहे हैं जब फाइनली सारा आईजीएसटी सेंटर के पास पहुंच जाता है तब जो है आई थिंक ईयरली बेसिस पे दे अपोर्शन इट वो कैसे अपोर्शन करते हैं कि उसमें से सेंटर के पैसे सेंटर के पास रहते हैं स्टेट के पैसे स्टेट का अमाउंट दे सी दैट वेयर द सर्विस और गुड्स है उस बेसिस पे और क्रॉस यूटिलाइजेशन के बेसिस पे दे डिसाइड कि वो पैसे किसके पास जाएंगे सेकेंड एग्जाम्पल अगर टाइम मिलेगा आई विल टेक इलेस्ट्रेशन आई विल एक्सप्लेन इट अगेन ठीक है वन ट्वेंटी परसेंट जो है उसमें डाउट है रानी को रानी डोंट हैव एनी डाउट उसको आप इसी तरीके से आप सॉल्व करोगे आप वैल्यू के ऊपर वन ट्वेंटी परसेंट लगा देते हो ठीक है आप उसको समझो मैं अलग से उसको इट इज इट इज जस्ट अ मैथमेटिकल कैलकुलेशन विच यू हैव टू सी सो यू कैन सी दैट एंड ब्रेक बट बिफोर टेकिंग अ ब्रेक वील टेक ब्रेक एग्जैक्टली एट सेवन थर्टी थोड़ा सा टैक्सेबल इवेंट का आपको एक इंट्रोडक्शन देना चाहती हूँ ताकि आप ब्रेक में उसे सोचो भी और जो बच्चे ये इलस्ट्रेशन पढ़ना चाहते हैं लेकिन गो थ्रू दैट इलस्ट्रेशन इन दी ब्रेक ओके सो लेट अस हैव अ क्विक इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ चैप्टर टू जस्ट Now next is supply. Now supply क्या है Supply is the taxable event under GST. ठीक है तो first of all we will understand what is the taxable event. Taxable event is any transaction or occurrence that triggers the tax liability. यानी कि it is that event or it is that activity. Only if that activity, only when that activity is occurred, the taxpayer becomes liable to pay taxes otherwise he there is no uh, liability to pay that particular tax so levy of tax is based on the taxable event now that means in gst we know that this taxable event is supply so in case there is no supply there is no gst that is in short we can say now what is a taxable event let us understand it with the help of an example taxable event hota kya we we'll understand it without you know going into a taxation example let us take another example suppose you have gone to uh, visit taj mahal and you are standing outside or you are just you have uh, just um, you know um, got down at the uh, agra railway station and you are just thinking i will go to taj mahal so taj mahal for visiting taj mahal you know that there is a fee which is being entry uh, fee which is being levied or which has to be paid so does it mean when you uh, got down at the railway station you have to pay that fee no that is not the case okay then you uh, boarded a taxi and you uh, actually reached taj mahal and then you are standing outside taj mahal and thinking that we have to go inside at that time can you say that you have reached taj mahal so you are going to pay that fee entry ticket no when are you going to pay that fee when you actually enter the premises for that you have to pay that fee so that is the event for which that fee will be charged that is the so in case that is the event that is the uh, particular uh, transaction it's not a transaction it's an activity which has to occur only then that fee you have to pay so taj mahal authorities will not take any fee from you unless and until you enter their premises you cross their uh, main gate and then it, when it, it becomes you become liable to pay that fee then it becomes a secondary issue that yes which fee you have to pay either you are a, what is your age either you are a foreign tourist or you are an indian tourist so the amount will vary that is a different thing but the your liability to pay that fee will arise as soon as you 
and it enters the premises. You have to first take the ticket and then you can enter the uh, premises. So you enter the premises, you have to pay the fee. Similarly, taxable event. Supply has taken place. GST, uh, supply has taken place. That means GST is comes into picture. Taxable event has occurred. GST is triggered. Now, whether the GST will be of X amount or Y amount, whether there can be exemption, who will pay that, who which state will collect that, that is a different issue. So every uh, tax law has a taxable event. Without taxable event, any tax cannot exist because on what event you will levy the tax? When will you say that tax is payable? Because uh, you should know that, yes, this is the reason why we are paying the tax. It is the reason for pay levying that tax. It is the reason for paying that tax. So that reason, that transaction, that event, that activity has to first of all take place. Then that tax will become payable. Under GST, it is supply. But let us see some other laws. Income tax. In income tax, the taxable event is earning of income. When you earn an income, you become liable to income tax. Only thing is then afterwards, exemptions come into play. Then there is a threshold limit then uh, there will be many uh, concessions and deductions will be there. But only thing, uh, the what, if, what is decided is that you, uh, you are liable to pay income tax subject to all the other exemptions, concessions and other things. Under customs law or customs, customs duty is liable on import or export of goods. Similarly, under central sales tax law or under VAT, sale of goods was the taxable event. So if there is a sale of goods, VAT will come into picture. If there is no sale of goods, VAT will not come into picture. VAT will come in case of the intrastate supply and uh, central sales tax will come into picture on interstate supply. But that was an erstwhile law. That was uh, today a very limited uh, application it has. Similarly, under service tax law, what was the taxable event? Provision of services. If services are provided, then only service tax will be levied. So you can see the significance of the taxable event because it decides the levability of GST only after taxable event GST comes into picture. So we have to be very sure about supply when can an event or activity or transaction be termed as supply because everybody would try to come uh, to uh, categorize its activity in a non-supply. That is uh, So that is the only way to uh, be uh, to elude that tax or to be away from that tax, to get rid of this tax. But the revenue will always try to put your activity into supply. For that, they have explained the definition of supply explicitly in great detail. And that we'll go through after the break. So we are taking a break for 10 minutes and we'll be right back after 10 minutes. So in this 10 minutes break, I would advise you to relax a bit. And then if you want to go through that illustration again, you can go through and ask your queries. And in taxable event also, you can ponder upon
ठीक है वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स नाउ वील कंटिन्यू फ्रॉम वेयर वी हैड लेफ्ट यस बिफोर दैट आई विल टेक फ्यू क्वेरीज व्हिच आई रेड ड्यूरिंग द ब्रेक जसप्रीत इज आस्किंग दैट मैम हाउ विल वी से इफ वी आर यूजिंग दी ऑन इनवर्ड सप्लाईज वी हैव पेड सी जी एस टी एंड एस डी एस टी एंड ऑन आउटवर्ड सप्लाईज वी हैव कलेक्टेड आई जी एस टी सो हाउ विल हाउ विल वी से दिस दैट वी हैव टेकन द क्रेडिट ऑफ अदर सी जी एस टी एंड एस डी एस टी और वी हैव टेकन क्रेडिट ऑफ आई जी एस टी जसप्रीत यू विल टर्म इट एज टेकिंग क्रेडिट ऑफ सी जी एस टी एंड आई जी एस टी यू टेक क्रेडिट ऑफ योर इनवर्ड सप्लाईज so whatever inward supply whatever tax you have paid on inward supplies that is your itc whatever tax you had paid on your outward supplies that is your output tax jo aapne apni purchases pe pay kiya hai wo aapka itc hota hai wo aapka jo bhi tax aapne purchases pe pay kiya hai usko use kiya aapne apne sales pe tax pay karne ke liye so that is tax paid on the sales is your output tax so isliye aapka jo example hai usme You have taken a credit of CGST and एस डी एस टी आपने सी जी एस टी और एस डी एस टी का क्रेडिट लिया और उससे आपने अपना आउटपुट टैक्स जो की आई जी एस टी था उसको पे किया सो होप यू नो हाउ यू हैव टू टर्म इट देन संगीता इज आस्किंग मैम स्टेट विच प्रोवाइड गुड्स एट दी फर्स्ट स्टेज इज ऑलवेज नॉट हैविंग क्रेडिट इन आर एग्जाम्पल स्टेट वन डिड नॉट गेट एनी थिंग सो दिस विल हैपन इन केस इट गॉट फर्दर यू नो uh sold from state 2 to state 3 then state 2 also has to give its share to center and then it will again go back to state 3 so this goes on so that is not a problem revenue issues are actually tackled at the end and you know that there are various methods with which uh, through which these states are compensated otherwise also um some students are asking in uh, the format to solve the problems this will be taking in subsequent sessions all these things will be deliberated upon during the sessions we have separate problem solving sessions also at the end there you will get to know how to solve the problems how to apply rate everything how to how you have to present your answer that will also be taken care of how igst is adjusted sangeet wani is asking so igst is also similar to sgst uh, <clears throat> in case of union territories without legislature utgst is applied but there also yeah, because it's a, a in the similar manner you have to i yeah, maybe if possible i will frame an example for that and i will let you know the set of procedure um sangeet shrinivasan is saying can we do one or two quiz time questions we'll try to cover at the end so that after covering the topic we are doing that so after that now we proceed to the taxable supply concept okay. oh that so i have got few more queries can gst paid on one type type kind of goods can be used as itc for another kind of another class of goods yes very much you can do that aparna if you are in fact itc is not product specific there is no one to one correlation between itc whatever credit you have paid on purchases in fact for services if you are paying some credit uh, some itc uh, some uh, gst you can use use it for goods also and vice versa whatever tax you are paying on the inward supplies now these inward supplies can be goods capital goods services any uh, thing on which itc is available that comes to a pool and that is termed as itc now this amount can be used for making the outward supplies and uh, this outward supplies can be of anything so that does not matter only it should be an output tax and that credit will be used or that <coughs> itc will be used for paying this output tax so that is what is important on in whatever type of inputs input services capital goods on which you are taking the itc that is immaterial can we set of igst credit with sgst and cgst and sgst or vice versa yes avinash you can do that only bar is on cgst and sgst CGST cannot be used for SGST. SGST cannot be used for CGST. But this is only for information. Don't go into it. This will be again discussed separately in ITC chapter. Can we watch the previous session lecture to cover the syllabus fast? Yes, Suman, you can see that the all recorded lectures are available on YouTube as well as our um, US app. You can see the recorded lecture and you can cover that and you can see the recorded lectures again and again in case you want to focus on a particular portion. You are not clear with something. Please go to the recorded lecture. this will help you in understanding the concept again because sometimes it is difficult to catch up during the class we also have keep we have to keep uh, uh, account of time so you can see the recorded lecture afterwards first igc uh, first igst is adjusted towards cgst and then sgst patro you are right but don't go into igst too much 
you will be knowing that you will be understanding that separately in a separate session Shan Gautam, uh, if person registered under GST can claim ITC for personal use, no. But ITC cannot be used for personal use. Again, it is an ITC specific question. We'll take it afterwards, such type of questions. Uh, Manohar is asking, in practical point of view, is 900 really subtracted from statement? No, this is only a table to show you that how the amount is moving from one state to another. This is only in a statement which we have made to explain you the flow of credit or flow of uh, tax from one state to another, from center to state, from state to center. This is only for your uh, understanding. Now we move further in taxable event. Okay, now taxable event, uh, now we have known that yes, in GST, taxable event is supply. So, <clears throat> under supply, um, and GST law has defined supply in section 7. Plus, we have to take help of Schedule 1, Schedule 2 and Schedule 3 to the CGST Act, which covers the concept of deemed supply, then the classification of a supply as supply of goods or as supply of services, and Schedule 3, which contains the non-supplies or you can say negative list under supplies, or you can say the supplies which are neither supply of goods nor supply of services, or activities which are neither supply of goods nor supply of services. <clears throat> so, this is the whole framework or the broad um, framework which we have to go through for understanding the concept of supply under GST. Now we come to next slide. Yes. Um, <clears throat> definition of supply. Now most important thing under definition. That it is an inclusive definition. G uh, the most important definition of GST law. That is the base, the foundation of GST law. And that has been defined through an inclusive definition. So it is very amusing because when we uh, when we got to know about supply, we had a curiosity that yes, we should know what is supply. Then we we'll able to find out when GST is livable. But when we saw the definition, we saw that it is an inclusive definition. So some of you might wonder that what is the problem with inclusive definition or um, why is it called an inclusive definition? It is an inclusive definition because it starts with supply includes all forms of supply of goods or services such as this is and this made or agreed to be made for a consideration by a person in course of furtherance of business. So what is our focus here is the word includes. When the word so definition starts with the word includes, it means that it is an inclusive definition. It does not explain what supply means actually. So <clears throat> we know that that when we say it is an, uh, when it is an inclusive definition, it means that Supply means whatever you know or you feel what, what all is supply is actually a supply plus it includes all forms of supply in good of goods and services when we and see how it has been defined all forms of supply. So all forms of supply are there under supply but what is supply actually has not been defined. Then we got an illustrative list of eight <clears throat> types of supplies. And then we saw the other conditions which has been listed in the definition. But the crux is that the, it is an inclusive definition. Now, I told you that what is the problem of inclusive definition? For example, if we uh, if somebody is asked to define television and he defines television as television includes a CRT television TV, an LED TV, LCD TV, then a 3D TV, 4K and then 8K television and uh, then uh, this, this um, OLED TV, QLED TV, it includes all these things. This is what television is. So you actually feel, uh, you feel, you will wonder that what actually is television, we are not aware. We have only seen what it includes, that this includes, this is the type of televisions are included, but what is actually a television, we are not aware. So it doesn't actually give an idea or a very uh, exhaustive idea as to what a television is. Same is with the definition of supply. The supply being such an important concept in the GST should have been explained or uh, it should have been defined in an exhaustive manner but under GST it has been defined in an inclusive manner 
although law has tried its best to uh, to clarify each and every aspect of the definition by uh, further clauses which have been there under section 7 but it starts with the clause is that supply includes so we'll take this definition further that uh, we'll we'll break this definition into further parts and we'll discuss each and every section of this uh, first clause that is section 7 subsection 1 clause a which says supply includes all forms of supply of goods or services or both such as now this gives an illustration that what type of supplies are actually included which are sale transfer barter exchange license rental lease and disposal made or agreed to be made for a consideration so you see we have to stress on which words consideration by a person then in course or furtherance of business so we'll see significance of each of these terms in further slides so what are the parameters of supply parameters of supply are please don't pay attention to these boxes or these uh, which have been given as exceptions, we first have to see only the parameters. Supply should be of goods and services in course or furtherance of business for a consideration. So these are the three parameters. When we say, <clears throat> how will we know that a particular activity or transaction is a supply, we'll first of all check three parameters. These are the three basic parameters which have to be checked. First is whether this supply is a supply of good or service. Okay, is it is it so? Then we'll move further. We'll see that whether this supply is in course or furtherance of business supply has been made or agreed to be made in course or furtherance of business if that is also fine then we'll move further and we'll see whether the supply has been made for a consideration yes that means it's the supply should not be free of course there should be some consideration which has been charged for the supply if these three parameters are fulfilled then we'll be move further and there are certain exceptions which has been provided by law to these three parameters but that we'll see in further course of discussion we'll come to come back to this slide to discuss this first parameter was supply should be of goods or services and here we have seen the exclusion that is money and securities so all goods and securities if they are being there any activity or transaction is including supply of goods or services that is a supply under gst law so supply should be of goods or services but anything which is neither a good nor a service that will not be a supply. <clears throat> now, anything which is neither good or services. So, definition of goods and services specifically excludes money and it excludes securities. That these two things are not goods. These two things are not services. So, they are neither goods nor services. Now, now since they are not goods or services, so they cannot, any transaction in money or any transaction in securities can never be termed as supply because we know supply can only be of goods or services and these two things are not goods not services now first of all let us understand the definition of goods or services because we say good supply should be of goods or supply should be of services so we should first of all know what is a goods act as per gst law and what are services as per gst law first is definition of goods goods means now see this is an exhaustive definition here we have, we are explaining what a goods actually means. So goods means every kind of movable property. The term goods actually, the first thing which comes to our mind is something which is moving. So if some immovable property is there, you cannot call it to be a good. If a plant and machinery is embedded to earth, you have fixed it to earth and that cannot be a movable property. <clears throat> that cannot be a, something which you can take and move. So it can be heavy, it has to be taken through trains or through uh, heavy vehicles. That is fine, but it should not be an immovable property. So first is goods should be movable. They exclude money and securities. As we had discussed earlier, also definition explicitly excludes money and security. Then goods include actionable claims. Now important, what is actionable claims? Actionable claims are is a kind of a uh, promise which is made by one person to another to pay some money which gives you a uh, right uh, to claim money from the other person. And if that person does not give that money, you can claim it or enforce that in a court of law. Okay. For example, rental income. If you have given some house on rent and you your rent is due from, the, from your tenant, then this is an actionable claim. You can claim your rent amount from the tenant in a court of law if he does not pay that. Another example could be insurance policy. 
if you have taken an insurance policy for a, for your car and your car is damaged then you can claim your insurance you can uh, claim your insurance amount from the insurance company and if they do they do not pay it you can claim it in the court of law so that is any any debt any kind of debt which you are uh, you are about to receive or you uh, you have to receive then that debt will be an actionable claim for you because you can claim the uh, recovery of that particular debt in the court so that is an actionable claim so actionable claim is a good now it is an intangible item but it is uh, included in the definition of goods now what is the repercussion of including these actionable claims in this definition we'll do this when we will be doing schedule 3 we'll when we'll when we discuss schedule 3 we will consider this point once again we'll come back to this point but for the timing you should know that any actionable claim is a goods then second thing which it includes is growing crops, grass and things attached to earth or forming part of the land which are agreed to be severed before supply or under a contract of supply. Now you have your crops in your field and you have agreed that yes, I am selling these crops to you. I will severe them, I will cut these crops and I will give it to you. Then that is the, that are good. So, agreement your crops are standing and you ask me that whether these are goods or not then they are not goods there should be an agreement that they will be cut down and given to the uh, supply recipient or they have already been severed and they have been supplied to the recipient but they should be so because they should be made to move they should be in their movable condition they should be in a transportable condition then only they will be considered as goods so considering the definition of goods we got what we majorly got is goods should be movable Money and security is not goods. Actionable claims is goods. What does it actually signify? We will consider later on after when we will be doing Schedule 3. And grass crops which are agreed to be severed or which have been severed from land are goods. Now, before moving further to the definition of services, I am taking some queries. Okay. Uh, so Please provide PPTs on POS portal. These PPTs will be uploaded in the app, POS app. Uh, I have already provided PPTs for the previous uh, session. For this session also, after the session, you will be getting the PPTs. Further in says, uh, in uh, doing the business, matlab, for the purpose of business, when we say in course or furtherance of business, that activity has been taken in course of business or for the purpose of business, we are conducting that activity. All three parameters are compulsory. Uh, to fulfill the to consider that action as supply yes patro all three conditions have to be fulfilled all these parameters have to be fulfilled then only you can move further and you can see whether other conditions or other parameters are fulfilled but these are three basic parameters if these three parameters are satisfied you can call it supply after that comes certain exceptions that if this parameter is not there the, the law has provided certain relaxation you can see certain exceptions that if consideration is not there okay but in these cases still you can consider it supplied if uh, um, it is not in course or furtherance of business, then also some relax, some, no, I will not say relaxation, I will say exception. There is the, there is an exception to that also. In a particular case, even if uh, it is not in course or furtherance of business, then also we call that activity as supply. So that we'll do later on. But first of all, we have to focus only th on three things. Supply should be of goods or services. Supply should be for consideration and supply should be in course or furtherance of business. Keep these three things imprinted in your mind and you will never uh, make any fault in applying, in uh, attempting the supply questions. So these three things, any question for which requires you to determine whether a particular transaction or activity is a supply, first basic three, three checks you have to do, whether it is a good or service, it is in course of furtherance of business. It is made for consideration. If all these three are satisfied, then there is no issue. If any of them is not being satisfied, then we have to go to see the exceptions that whether it is covered in exceptions. If it is covered in exceptions, then it's fine. If it is not covered in exceptions also, then we will say that it is not a supply. In your uh, Srinivasan is saying section 8 is not considered. Now we'll consider section 8 tomorrow Srinivasan because it is of a composite and mixed supply. We will discuss it tomorrow. It actually chapter of supply also supply it is in section 7 plus schedule 1, 2 and 3. So we'll cover it. I will try explaining this in Hindi also afterwards, side by side, because actually uh, students from Southern region, they feel left out, but don't feel left out. Everything which I'm telling in Hindi, I always cover it in English also. 
बैंक सर्विस प्रोवाइड करती है तो बैंक के केस में सप्लाई नहीं कहा जा सकता बैंक आल्सो प्रोवाइड सर्विसेज हु सेज दैट वट एवर सर्विस बैंक इज प्रोवाइडेड इज नॉट कंसिडर्ड एज सप्लाई इट इज कंसिडर्ड एज सप्लाई अब नाउ वेदर इट विल बी लिवेबल टू जीएसटी और नॉट दैट इज अ डिफरेंट क्वेश्चन दैट वी विल सी आफ्टरवर्ड्स उसके कुछ सर्विसेज एग्जाम भी होती है लेकिन बैंक जो सर्विसेज प्रोवाइड करता है दैट इज अ सप्लाई ग्रोइंग क्रॉप्स बींग एग्रीकल्चर प्रोड्यूस अब वही आप ऋतुराज आगे की क्वेश्चन पूछ रहे हो सप्लाई है जीएसटी लगेगा कि नहीं लगेगा इज अ डिफरेंट क्वेश्चन फॉर बेनिफिट ऑफ एवरी स्टूडेंट आई विल टेल अभी जो हम पढ़ रहे हैं वो है कि सप्लाई है कि नहीं है जीएसटी इज वेदर वी हैव टू पे जीएसटी ऑन दैट पर्टिकुलर ट्रांजेक्शन और एक्टिविटी इज अ सेकेंडरी क्वेश्चन बिकॉज फॉर दैट वी हैव टू सी सो मेनी अदर थिंग्स दिस इज द फर्स्ट स्टेप टू सी वेदर जीएसटी इज लेवियबल और नॉट दैट इज वेदर इट इज अ सप्लाई और नॉट फिर धीरे धीरे हम हर स्टेप पर आएंगे एंड वी विल सी वेदर वी हैव टू एक्चुअली पे जीएसटी ऑन दैट पर्टिकुलर ट्रांजेक्शन or activity or not but first thing we have to determine is that whether that activity or transaction is a supply is supply or not uh <clears throat> securities examples for gst securities are shares and derivatives jo uh, abhi contracts hai forward contracts futures all these are securities agar aap usme koi bhi contract enter karte hain that is not a goods that is not goods we should make mention definitions with sections i once again repeat that first of all learn the concept retrade the concept in the exam Sec, uh, sections rules notification numbers they give an edge to your answer but they are secondary first thing is that you should you will you should be able to reproduce the concept properly and in uh, proper words you should be able to convey what you are saying actually now we come to the definition of services gst is levied on bank charges yes it is levied on bank charges but we have to see what type of charges are there this we will see in exemptions chapter mamta is asking which sections we have to remember please tell mamta there are, i am telling you again don't focus on sections at this point of time only see what only see the provision section 7 aap keh sakte ho chalo that is very basic and everybody would remember ki section 7 mein supply ki definition hai other sections there are significant sections for value of supply like section 15 and uh, for every concept there is a specific section but i would suggest first focus on concept then go to sections now definition of services services means anything other than goods now services ke definition to bahut hi simple hai jo goods nahi hai wo sab services mein aa gaya that means everything is being taxed under gst law kyunki certain things we have called as goods we have termed them as goods and anything which is not a good it is a service so everything has come under the gst net now what it includes money and securities again <clears throat> because the intention of law was not to tax money and securities transaction in money and securities but if any transaction is facilitating anybody is facilitating or arranging a transaction in securities jaise ki share broker any stock broker is there he is arranging a transaction in securities then that person is liable to gst that is a supply similarly if money uh, money transaction is not a is a, is a service aapne money you have given money to someone aapne money exchange kiya hai wo supply nahi hai but if you are converting money from uh, you are con converting the currency from one some foreign currency is being converted to indian currency or from one foreign currency to another foreign currency that will be termed as supply so this services the goods uh, services include the activities relating to use of money or conversion of money by cash by any other mode from one form or currency or denomination to another for which a separate consideration is charged just money conversion ke liye aap consideration charge kar you are charging something for it if you are giving somebody money you are not charging any consideration you have given 1000 rupees to somebody that is 1000 only in your pocket also in his pocket also nothing has been exchanged but if you are converting money from one currency to another if you are converting the currency and you are paying extra charges for that that is a supply so anything uh, which has any transaction in uh, secure services or goods is a supply now we come to definition of money itna hum money ke bare mein pad rahe hain to money ki kya definition hai that is also very important it is an indian legal tender or any foreign currency so money can be a foreign currency also and it can be a check a promissory note bills of exchange letter of credit draft pay order traveler check kisi bhi form mein agar aapka money hai aap to then it will be termed as it will be included in this definition usko aapne uske upar aapko service uh, usko aapne services or goods ki definition mein nahi manna postal or electronic remittance any other instrument recognized by rbi as money will be included in the definition of money
this amount when used as a consideration to settle an obligation or exchange with Indian legal tender of another denomination. Aapne, uh, you have taken a, now 2000 rupees note is not there, but suppose you have taken a 2000 rupees note earlier and you got it exchanged for 20 hundred rupees note. Then that is not a uh, money, that is not, that is a money, but that is not a uh, supply transaction. But it shall not include any currency that is held for its numismatic value. This is important. And now suppose that 2000 note which has been stopped, uh, whose usage has now been stopped. But somebody is holding it as a souvenir that I want to have a memory of this 2000 note. Or the, the earlier, the old 500 and 1000 rupees note, somebody is having that with him. One note or two note as a, for its numismatic value that it is an old note and I want to keep it as a souvenir then that will not be considered as money. It is only held for its numismatic value. <clears throat> so if you are exchanging that, suppose you, uh, now why it is not a money? If you are giving that for a higher amount to somebody, you are give, somebody is purchasing that uh, note from you for an amount, for a consideration, then that will not be considered as a transaction in money. It will be a supply. Now, once again, we came to the definition of supply section 71A of CGST Act. Now we are breaking the definition. So uh, we have, uh, done the first parameter supply of goods or services is uh, included in the definition of supply now we said all forms of supply all forms of supply when we said we had this uh, list of eight types of supplies now we'll go uh, to uh, to understand the each and every term which we have considered before that i will take some queries what supply excludes can you come again please Ajas. satish is asking what supply excludes uh, Satish, these are these were the three parameters which I told you, but there were some exceptions to it also. Supply excludes the negative supplies which are given in Schedule 3, but you will come to Schedule 3 tomorrow. We will, uh, day after tomorrow, in next class, we will do Schedule 3. That is excluded from supply, but that we will do in next class. Now we come to the these th uh, transactions. So first one is sale. Now these are the eight illustrative list of uh, supplies which is given to you that all forms of supply. Now apart from this, anything which you can think as a supply is also a supply. It is only an illustrative list because the words such as has been used before them. We say supply includes all forms of supply of goods or services or both such as. So supply of goods or services, we have seen what is goods, what is services. And then we come to what type of, what are the, what is the illustrative form of supply? So these are the eight illustrative forms of supply. One by one, we will discuss each of them. First is sale. When can we term a particular transaction as sale? When there is a transfer of ownership from one person, from seller to buyer. A shopkeeper is selling a pen to a buyer for rupees 100. Now, after selling the pen, the shopkeeper has charged rupees 100 from the buyer. And he has transferred the ownership of this pen to the buyer. Now, if this pen gets damaged or it gets lost, it is the problem of the buyer. Supplier has nothing to do with it because it is no more a property of supplier. It is the property of buyer. So in sale, the ownership of the goods or services, it's not, a, uh, it's not for services. Ownership actually gets transferred from the seller to the buyer. So this is sale. Second is transfer. In transfer, there is no compulsion that the ownership has to be transferred. Only thing is that the goods have to be, uh, the possession of the goods has to be shifted from one person to another. For example, a person has shifted goods or transferred goods from his factory to his depot for sales. So that will be considered as transfer. No consideration might have been charged from, to, from factory to depot. Obviously, uh, uh, Free of cost, he must have transferred his goods without charging anything, without under a delivery chalan, he will transfer the goods. But that would be considered as transfer and it becomes a supply. So whether GST will be paid or not, that is a secondary question. But it becomes a supply if goods are transferred from factory to depot. Apart from other conditions, we'll see that. If it is without cost, it is free of cost, then we'll see whether any exception is attracted or not. But what do you mean by transfer? Transfer means... The transfer of goods from one person to another without transfer of ownership. Exchange. In fact, exchange we'll do with barter. 
exchange and barter what is barter means when you are when you are uh, giving some goods or services in exchange of receiving some goods or services same is with, is with exchange also that you are giving some goods or something in kind and you are receiving something in kind some goods or services you are receiving but what is the difference between exchange and barter in case of a barter it is only you are receiving goods or you are giving goods and similarly either you are receiving services or you are giving services but uh, nowhere money is involved that means for example the example which we have taken a barber has given the haircut services to a doctor and in turn the doctor provided medical consultancy to the barber so they did not exchange any money he said i will give you the medical consultancy he is having some medical problem and he gave him a solution to that and he said okay so i have given i have given the consideration for you to you for my haircut and that person has also cut his hair because he has actually got the medical consultancy from doctor so this is a barter both of them have given the uh, consideration in the form of kind doctor has given a service and similarly he has received a service from barber of haircut where as in where as in exchange money is usually involved how we have given a new we have got a new car in exchange of our old car now this old car obviously would not have been uh, given it would not have recovered the entire amount of the new car so suppose you have got a new car for rupees 3 lakhs and in turn you have given your 50000 rupees old car to the dealer and you said that okay you exchange this and then this is an exchange offer we generally get from the uh, sellers that okay you will take your old car we'll scrap that or whatever we do that with that but we'll take your old car for this much amount and your new car is at that this price so we'll reduce that amount which you are paying on uh, which which will we will recover from the old car and that uh, rest of the amount you have to pay in cash so to get this new car what we are giving is we are giving this old car plus we are giving 2 lakh 50000 rupees also so the exchange involves money as well as the goods this is what exchanges but this transaction is also supply so exchange transaction barter transaction these are supplies other forms of supplies are license lease rental and disposable this makes it eight so eight forms of supply we will be discussing now first is license license is a permission to engage in any occupation any business which is otherwise restricted otherwise it is not permitted without license you cannot engage in that particular business for example the a certain type of exports for exporting certain products you have to take a license because it is not otherwise permitted their export is uh, restricted so for that you have to first of all take a permission from the government that i would be exporting these goods in this much quantity conditions have to be fulfilled and then you will get that license so this is a supply when you are taking that license this process of taking license is also a supply second is rental rental is to rent something you are giving something on rent for example you are giving a car on rent or you are giving a building on rent and lease lease is also a kind of rent you are giving something on rent it could be a property it could be a car it could be a uh, electronic device or some machinery but only difference between lease and rental is uh, generally the duration duration of lease is generally a longer duration lease is for a longer duration than rental last comes the disposal disposal is uh, getting rid of a particular item or a particular product now when i say i am disposing a goods disposing some goods so it need not necessarily mean that i have sold the goods there could be a case that i have given the goods in charity i have given the goods free of cost to my friend or i have uh, uh, scrapped those goods i have uh, totally scrapped those goods not got i did not get anything for that but i have just uh, sent it to the given it to the scrap dealer without any taking any amount because it was not worth of anything so disposal is a broader term than sale say dispose sale is included in disposal but disposal is a broader term which includes scrapping the product giving it on uh, uh, free of cost or giving it for uh, this uh, giving it for charity so all these are included in disposal so these are the eight forms of supply which you have to see before determining uh, whether a particular transaction is supply or not okay then we come to the so in parameters of supply we have uh, we have seen goods and services we have seen eight forms of supply now next we comes to we come to in the course or furtherance of business now supply sorry consideration we come to consideration supply should be for a consideration okay now 
that means free of cost if you are giving something to a person then that is not a supply in general sense though there are some exceptions to that but that is an exception here is rule uh, schedule 1 so exceptions are enumerated in schedule 1 and we will today cover till schedule 1 only but before that we will see what is consideration and then uh, what are the cases where if, even if consideration is not there we will still term it as supply let us take some queries before that Claim in goods and services when credit will be claimable. Abdul, please reframe your query. Uh, Mithuna says, Mithuna, if I am not selling cars, then I and then I sell a car which was an asset of the business. Can I call it furtherance uh, of business? Yes. If you are into the business of selling cars and you are selling a car, which uh, but it was an asset. It was an asset of the business. Then also you can say it in course or furtherance of business because it is not only. If you are selling your stock in trade, that will be called as in course or furtherance of business. If you are conducting a business and you sold your capital goods also, then also you can term it as your, uh, it can be termed as supply. If you can say that, yes, it is in course or furtherance of business. While conducting your business, you are doing that. You are not doing it in a personal manner. That was not car which was being used for your personal uh, purposes. If it was a car which was being used for your personal purposes and then you sold that car, that will not be in course or furtherance of business. But since you were using it as an asset in business and you sold that, that will be considered as in course or furtherance of business. So, Miduna, I hope it is clear to you. Um, Aisha wanted to see previous slide. So, Aisha, if you want to see previous slides, I'm just going through them once slowly. Ma'am, Shravan is asking, ma'am, barter fees. Barter, I already told you that one, some goods are being exchanged between two persons. There should, or some services are being exchanged. But there should not be any money involved in that. Ma'am, land is not included, is not a good, then included in service if sale. No, sale of land is not a service, uh, Vishali. Um, how are you, Matlab, how did you conclude that? Please let me know. Higher purchase are examples of transfer, yes. Okay, Divya, take care of, take care of your health and you can see the recorded lecture. When credit is claimable in goods and services, Abdul is asking. Okay, Abdul, ITC we will discuss afterwards because I, for ITC we have a dedicated session. If we now, when we are doing supply, please focus on supply. ITC is claimable on goods and services when we are paying the output tax. Okay. Now we come to the another parameter of supply that is consideration. So if you have to uh, term anything as supply, you have to check whether consideration is being charged or not. Now, what is consideration? So, we should know first of all that what is consideration, how law defines consideration. So, any payment in money or otherwise, if you are paying in money or you are paying in kind for supply of any goods or services or both, that is a consideration. Monetary value of any act or forbearance for the supply, if you are, for, you, you are doing any act or you are forbearing something in lieu of uh, for the supply, then monetary value of that particular forbearance is consideration. Now, important point is that consideration can flow from the recipient as well as from a third person. So, it can be so that I am the person who is, a, for example, if a movie is being uh, made and the director is paying for the makeup uh, charges of all the artists. So, those charges are being paid by the director, but who is actually receiving the services are the artists. So, services are being received by one person and charges or consideration is being paid by the another person or a third person, then also it is a consideration. So, this is a case where a third person is paying the consideration. Now, sometimes we made security deposits at the beginning of the service. That yes, if we receive the service, this is a security. You just keep give a security of 1000 in advance and after the, afterwards, you pay me you pro, uh, you pay me the rest of the amount and at the end of the uh, completion of the contract the supplier says i will re return your money so supplier has taken some deposit from the recipient at the beginning of the contract and at the end of the contract he has agreed that he will return that amount so if he returns that amount then that deposit will not be considered as consideration but if he says you give me 1000 rupees today i will provide you the services and after and at, at the end of the pro contract, these thousand rupees I will adjust from the consideration to from the total amount which you have to pay. 
suppose the contract is of for 10,000 rupees. 1,000 rupees is the security deposit. And the uh, supplier says that at the end of the contract, from these 10,000, I will only charge you 9,000 and 1,000 rupees I will adjust at the last stage. So then this deposit becomes consideration. If this deposit is returnable, then it is not a consideration because it should actually be used for that particular supply. Na? Then the consideration excludes any subsidy which you are receiving from central government or state governments. That will not form part of your consideration. So this is what consideration is. Land is not a good or a service. So this is clear. Vishali says that land is not movable. Yes, land is not movable. It is an immovable property and that is why it is not a consideration. Okay, so it is clear to you. License, lease, rental, disposal are supply. Disposal, I already explained, Shravan, that it is a, you are disposing of those goods. You are getting rid of those goods. Either by way of sale or you are giving it in charity. You are scrapping it. You have given it to free of cost. You have given it free of cost to your friend. You have taken that at your home. So that can also be considered a disposal that you are permanently you have shifted it to your home that you will not use it now in business. So that can also be considered as disposal. Uh, Ashok is giving an example of uh, barter and it's correct Ashok. Your example is correct. This Preet is saying if I if UPI for UPI I am being charged 10 rupees that we have to see uh, this Preet whether this consideration is for because there, you are not actually carrying out any transaction. This is something which that person has actually charged from you. Forbearance means uh, you are... Something is... There are two things. One is act and one is forbearance. Act means you are acting for... Uh, you are acting something. You are doing some act for the recipient. Second is forbearance. Forbearance is if I say... If a person say, uh, request me that... Uh, you are a supplier, but please don't supply in my area. And for that, I will be giving you 1000 rupees. So it is a forbearance. I'm actually uh, bearing this. Uh, I'm actually foregoing to supply, uh, make supplies in your area. And I'm forbearing this particular uh, request. Or you can say, I'm actually uh, refraining from doing that. Deposit, Swati, if you are using that deposit for making the payment, that means uh, your consideration is 10,000 rupees. 1,000 rupees is your security deposit which you charged in the beginning of the contract. Now, at the end of the contract, the you received from the supply recipient only 9,000 rupees. And this 1,000 rupees which you have initially collected as security deposit, you said, okay, I have received 1,000 rupees as security deposit. That's all, that also I will include in this total contract amount and you give me only 9,000 now. So that means that 1,000 rupees has been applied as consideration and therefore, this deposit will be considered as consideration. But suppose I say that initially I am taking 1000 rupees, contract value is 10,000 rupees. So at the end of the contract, you pay me 1000 rupees. And after everything, I will pay, return you 1000 rupees back. Then this 1000 rupees, which we are returning back, will not be considered as consideration. Third person consideration is I told you that I am receiving the service or I am receiving the goods, but some other person is paying. Suppose the head office has given an instruction to a seller that you deliver these goods to my branch office. But payment will be done by me, by head office. So head office is a third person who is paying the, the consideration. But goods are actually being received by the branch office. So this is a third part, third person who is paying the consideration. Quid pro quo means quid pro quo you have seen from the screen. But I am yet to discuss it. Let me discuss it first. Deposit means advance only when it is being used for as a consideration. But in case that deposit is returned to the uh, recipient, then it will not be in the nature of advance. Because on advance, we have to charge GST, Swati. So in case we are saying deposit is advance, that means we are not returning that advance. We have tax pay it, we will not return it after Donations received by charitable institutions from individual donors without quid pro quo. Now, consideration ke team clarifications and your department ne bataye hai ki is case mein hum usko consideration maanenge ya nahi maanenge. First case is any charitable institution if it is receiving donations. So, can we call that donation as consideration or not? Now, straight away there is no clear answer to this. You cannot say ki agar donation hai to wo kabhi consideration nahi hogi. It is not so. You have to see the nature of donation. 
because sometimes in the guise of donation we are actually advertising our business so that advertisement if it is being done then that is not a donation that will be a sub consideration and it can be considered as supply so quid pro quo quid pro quo means that uh, quid pro quo must exist on part of the recipient for being consideration if we want to consider that donation as consideration then recipient must be receiving something something for something quid pro quo means something for something that means recipient is getting uh, recipient is doing something for the uh, recipient of money here we are saying recipient of money i donated 1000 rupees to a temp to a charitable organization and charitable organization is the recipient of the donation in this case now that charitable organization if it is doing something for me then it becomes a consideration but if that charitable organization is not doing anything for me then it does not becomes consideration it is a donation and that transaction is not a supply now for example if the uh, first of all let us see the provision then i will take the example if the name of the donor is displayed in the charitable institution as an expression of gratitude you have donated 10000 rupees to a uh, temple or to a charitable organization and there they have mentioned on the um, on the stone or on the wall that yes this has been uh, constructed by so and so in the memory of his father or uh, on he maybe not in for any specific purpose they mentioned this has been donated by so and so person then they have only expressed a gratitude that yes this has been donated by a person but if they have mentioned it this has uh, this wall has been constructed by mr sohan and then you, his entire official address or owner of sohan builders then in a way his business is being advertised he is advertising his business then that is a consideration then the amount which he is giving as a donation is not a donation actually it becomes consideration and it can be termed as supply considering other conditions are fulfilled if there is no reference or mention of his business activity then it is uh, it is not a consideration here it is mentioned it is consideration if there is no reference or mention of any business activity then it is not a consideration because uh, if you are mentioning your business activity then it is a sort of advertising which you are getting from the charitable institution and it becomes supply or it becomes consideration and then we have to see whether it is supply or not so gst is not levable where all three fund three conditions are fulfilled which are first of all gift or donation you are giving to a charitable institution the payment has the nature of gift or donation and the purpose is philanthropic that means there is no purpose of advertising your uh, company or your business you are not getting any commercial gain from that it is only for philanthropic purpose you wanted to donate something and you donated the money you didn't expect anything in return and you did not get anything in return aapne na kuch socha ki aapko milega us donation ke badle na hi aapne kuch aisa apna business ka koi advertisement kara na koi commercial gain usse liya aapne simple paise diye और उसके बाद भूल गए उसका कोई बिजनेस पे आपका कोई बिजनेस एडवर्टीजमेंट या कोई आपका पर्पस सॉल्व नहीं होना चाहिए दीज आर टू एग्जांपल्स वेयर वी आर सेइंग इट इज नॉट अ कंसीडरेशन वेयर अ डोनेशन इज नॉट अ कंसीडरेशन मिस्टर भूषण डोनेटेड अ ब्लैक बोर्ड टू योगनिष्ठ संस्थान इट इज अ चैरिटेबल योगा इंस्टीट्यूशन एंड अंडरनीथ द ब्लैक बोर्ड दी दिस चैरिटेबल इंस्टीट्यूशन प्रिंटेड गुड विशेस फ्रॉम मिस्टर मोहन मिस्टर भूषण सो इट इज नॉट अ कंसीडरेशन इट इज अ प्योर डोनेशन and it will not be a supply because his business is not being advertised here he is not getting any commercial gain from this smriti shrimati durga devi donated some money to a temple in the memory of her late father the temple trust constructed a room in the temple complex from such donation and wrote unhone ek kamra banwa diya aur uske upar unhone likh diya ki ye unhone apne father ki memory mein kamra banwaya hai door ke upar likh diya so this they are not advertising his business usse kuch bhi commercial gain nahi ho raha usse so this is a donation it is not a consideration another example of consideration is any artist you have you, uh, you have made uh, paintings and you want to get it displayed in an exhibition now in that exhibition you have sent all your artwork from your uh, you know uh, this um, now i will not got warehouse where the place where you have kept all your artwork you are transferring it to the gallery now you have shifted everything to gallery for exhibition so does it amount to supply does this transfer amount to supply no because there is no consideration consideration will flow only when somebody at the exhibition likes your artwork and he pays for that artwork or the work or some amount so then the actual supply takes place when the artworks is sent to the gallery it is not a supply when somebody chooses it for purchasing and they makes the payment then it becomes a supply 
now comes the no claim bonus now no claim bonus uh, is a very common practice which insurance companies um, they follow what they do is that you have got your car insured suppose and for a year you have not claimed anything you have not lodged any insurance claim for any damage or any uh, kind of damage to the for any kind of damage to the product uh, to the insured product which is car in this case or any other claim you have not made now if you don't make any claim during the year they give you a bonus at the end of the year and how do they give that bonus in your next year's premium when they charge you next year's premium they deduct that no claim bonus for example the next year's bonus was of rupees 100 and no claim bonus was of rupees 50 to so the person has to pay next year only 80 rupees as premium so this is how they gave the give the no claim bonus to the person for not lodging an insurance claim during a particular year now the question which arose was that whether this no claim bonus is a consideration for some supply so the answer was no because when at the beginning of the year i had taken the insurance claim i had not promised the company i had not agreed to the company that i will not lodge any claim during there in fact my purpose was exactly opposite i wanted to get my product insured and i thought that i will take the claim if needed but situation was such that i did not need the claim or maybe my damage was so minor that i felt not to take the claim and not to take the insurance claim instead claim the no claim bonus because that was more beneficial to me but the intention was not to take this no claim uh, no, not to take this service so the insured person that means i am the person who has taken the insurance from the insurance company so i am not providing any service to the insurance company for this in return of this no claim bonus it is only an amount which is flowing it is only a kind of deduction which the company is giving me for not filing the claim but i am not providing any service see what service i am providing had i agreed in the beginning of the year that i will not file any claim during the year and you give me 20 rupees at the end of the year then it would have been consideration but this is not what happens in no claim bonus we never agree to that we always want to take the claim situation could be such that we did not require it or we feel that uh, it was a for a smaller amount so we don't take it <coughs> sorry so this is not a consideration now next comes the next parameter is uh, in course or furtherance of business now this is also very important parameter we are exceeding from uh, our slotted time so i hope all of you are comfortable with that and let me see some queries before that quid pro quo i hope is correct uh, is clear to everyone um what is the difference between quid pro quo and barter system um quid pro quo can be anything uh, in fact here when we are talking about donations then we are giving donations generally in cash it can be in kind also quid pro quo something for something so it can be in kind it can be in cash nothing uh, specific is there in quid pro quo so if that is what we are saying is it uh, is it barter or it is exchange so barter is if it is only in, in we are giving in kind and we are receiving in terms of goods only <laughs> services only but if we are uh, if money is involved then it becomes exchange so radha your query is i suppose answered for quick revision of gst i suggested in the last class the let us recapitulate portion given at the end of the chapters as well as you can refer saransh also i will explain no claim bonus at the end of the session bad lamani if time permits now we come to the business now in course of furtherance of business now in, uh, so this is the another condition that the supply should be in course of furtherance of business now what is business business is any any trade or commerce or manufacture or profession even if there is business includes all these things okay so it says that if any trade is there any activities you any manufacture profession activity you are conducting and even if there is no monetary benefit from that then also it will be considered as business that means business is what you usually think that yes you are carrying out a business that is what we normally feel but these are the items which specifically makes certain other items also as business this is also an exclusive definition if you see carefully so whatever you consider as business and in normal business in normal day to day practice in normal trade parlance what a business is is actually a business plus these activities 
for any trade or commerce, manufacture or profession, even if there is no monetary benefit, any activity of same nature. <coughs> uh, please wait for a minute. Now, uh, supply or acquisition of goods, including, so if you're acquiring any capital goods or services, that is also in course of business. Now, actually, if any activity you are conducting, even once, so definition says that any activity of same nature uh, with lesser frequency or uh, no frequency or volume or continuity. So if you're not rec doing anything on a recurring basis, even if you have sold something once, that can also be conducted as in the nature or in course of furtherance of business. Even if you have not sold something in volume, in very lesser quantity, you are selling something that will also be considered as business. Even if you are not uh, doing that activity very frequently at regular intervals, that is also, in fact, still it's a business. Any services or facilities provided by club or association to its members. Admission for <clears throat> consideration to any premises. So all these uh, activities are business. The service of service as holder of office accepted in course or furtherance of any trade or profession. That is also a business. You are uh, the activities of a race club. A, a race club is what it is doing. It is facilitating the betting activity through totalizer or license uh, or a license to bookmaker or activities of a licensed bookmaker. Then that is also a business. In fact, government or local authorities the services or activities which they are conducted, that is also in course of furtherance of business. So it makes you aware that yes, a government or a local authority is also liable to GST for whatever activities they are conducting. That those activities may be conducted in public interest or they may be considered to be conducted in public interest, but GST is still uh, liable on those activities. Later on, we'll see what exemptions are available to a government department. So some exemptions are available to them, but still they are liable, their activities are liable to GST. Now let us see some examples of in course of furtherance of business. Rishabh buys a car for his personal use. Now he has bought a car for his personal use and he sells, uh, so, uh, he sells to that car. So that activity is not in course or furtherance of business because he has been he is being using that car for the personal purposes and after that he sells it so it is not in course or furtherance of business then money uh, the money karnika sold his old bangles and earrings to uh, to abhushan dwellers and uh, the sale of old gold jewelry by an individual to dweller will not constitute supply because it is not in course of furtherance of business. <clears throat> you have sold your jewelry only once. You are not in the business of selling jewelry. Rishabh sold his car, but he is not in the business of car. So he is uh, he is using it for his personal purposes, and he is not uh, selling this in for his. He is not using that car for his business purposes till he sold it. So that cannot be considered as supply. Uh, these are the this is the view. In fact, in these two examples, this is the view, view which we are taking. As per department FAQs, but there are there is another view in these examples which says that like money money Kanika has sold her bangles. So some people are of the view, or some experts are of the view that even if an activity is conducted once, that can be considered as in course of furtherance of business. So even if money Kanika is selling her gold bangles only once, that is not her routine activity, regular activity, still it can be termed as supply. But whatever is given here is the most accepted uh, <clears throat> uh, view. So that is what we have given and you follow these examples uh, in the way they have been given. Then Sundaram Acharya, he is a painter and he painted some paintings. Now he sold those paintings uh, in an exhibition or somewhere and consideration he has used for charitable purposes. So whatever he uses the, uh, the consideration for, that does not matter. What is What matters is actually he is selling the paintings and that is in course of furtherance of business. If an RW is providing some services to its residents, residents, then that will also be included in the in course of furtherance of business only. Services by way of admission to circus, cinema halls, like we did in the we saw in the definition itself. If you are admitting, uh, if you are paying any amount for uh, or entry ticket to enter the cinema halls or for um, watching any movie 
this uh, to enter any amusement parks a uh, theme parks water parks so that is also a supply because it is a service by way of admission to admission of persons to any premises for a consideration so consideration is there in course of furtherance of businesses also because it is uh, expressly included in the definition of business then any service provided by a <clears throat> race club in the form of betting or for uh, betting on horses through a totalizer totalizer is a machine through which this betting is done so that is also in course or furtherance of business so these activities they qualify as the the test of in course or furtherance of business or we can say they qualify the business test so there are three tests which a transaction has to pass first is it should be a it should be uh, undertaken in goods or services second it should be for a consideration and third is it should be for business purpose so these three tests it has to pass if an activity or transaction satisfies all the above parameters then said activity or transaction it qualifies as supply under gst subject to the other exclusion subject to the other exceptions which we will be discussing now <clears throat> before that now first exception we said anything for con anything for consideration will only be a supply and second we said anything in course or furtherance of business should will be considered as supply so consideration plus business purpose should be there now first exception to business first exception is to the business test we says that import of services for consideration whether or not in course or furtherance of business is also a supply section 71 clause b says that even if you are importing any services for a consideration whether or not for business purpose it will be considered as supply so it should be for consideration so out of two things in fact uh, so, um, these are services so first test is passed that is supply should be of goods or services so services are there second test is consideration test consideration is there the third was business so business purpose is not there so even if business purpose is not there it will be considered as supply now let us see an example ramaya a proprietor has received the architect services for her personal residence from an architect located in new york at an agreed consideration of 5000 so consideration is there service is there service is being received only thing is that the Uh, usage is not that service is being received for the personal purpose, not for the business purpose. So business test is not uh, is not um, satisfied. Still, we call this supply this transaction as supply because Section Seven One Clause B says that it will be uh, considered as supply. It is an exception to the definition of supply. Otherwise, for supply, all three things, all three conditions have to be satisfied. But this is the first exception, which gives an exception to the condition of business purpose so import of services by ramaya is supply under section 71b though it is not in course or furtherance of business <clears throat> let us see some queries before moving further priyanka saransh is amended up to 31st october 2023 so it is applicable uh, it has all the position applicable for may 24 only thing you have to see is that it is a common booklet on goods and services tax law as well as customs and uh, so you have to see till uh, which portion is there relevant for at the intermediate level that care you have to take in while referring it aman is saying ma'am that's enough for today uh, i think all of you have got tired i have already exceeded by 15 minutes but uh, let me cover some portion at least for 5 min 5 more minutes we'll continue then we'll take the rest of the portion in next class if donation give and business name advertising then means consideration yes vishali you are right uh sale of painting by actor is supply how now this is what we are saying so even if an activity is taken once even if it is not a regular business regular activity even if the it is not a continuous business actor is not in the business of selling painting he made a painting and he sold them so that is uh, is not his recurring uh, that activity is not in the is an is in the nature recurring activity but still business definition is so wide definition of business under gst law is so wide that it includes that activity also within its purview ma'am didn't understand consideration 3 ppt business meaning can you explain in short business meaning if i summarize is that any activity which is taken even for a once it is taken not uh, it is very the frequency is very less it is not taken for uh, in return for money then also it can be in course of furtherance of business any uh, <clears throat> any activity of uh, um getting admission to an amusement park or any uh, this uh, movie theater 
etc that is also a business then the activity services provided by rwa to its members that is also a business so whatever we feel the business is apart from that there are so many activities which the definition of business has actually illustrated that yes these are also to be included in the definition of business okay goods definition shukla you see from my previous slides because otherwise i will not be able to cover all the portion section 71a a now this is a clause which we just now we saw the definition of business which says services provided by a uh, club to its members is a sub, uh, is in course or furtherance of business now there was always a doubt or there was always a doubt from the time of service tax that whether the club and its members are two different persons because so many courts rulings have considered the uh, club and its members to be one and same persons and if an activity is provided to self it is not a supply so for that purpose because there was so much ambiguity right from the time of service tax and it persisted in gst law also so um, this clause was subsequently inserted or incorporated in the definition of G, uh, supply which says any activity or transaction between a person association club etc to its members for a consideration now here consideration should be present and it should be in course or furtherance of business obviously because we it will be in course or furtherance of business because any activity by a club to its members is we have seen it test it uh, passes the test of business so both these things are present then that activity should be in goods or services that will be termed as supply so there is an explanation also which is inserted to override the earlier rulings which have actually ruled that the supply uh, the club and its members are not two different persons there were so many rulings which ruled that club and its members are one and the same person but under gst law we brought this amendment and we expressly mentioned that yes any activity between club and members will be termed as supply it will be because club and its members will be termed as two different persons see the explanation says not withstanding anything contained in any other law or judgment or decree or order of court tribunal or authority so even if any court has held otherwise also we will consider the person and its members or constituents as two different persons an activity between them will be considered as a supply between one by one person to another so this brought the supplies by a club to its members within the purview of gst then we come to schedule 1 schedule 1 is schedule 1 is uh, activities without consideration deemed supply now schedule 1 provides the exception to the second test of consideration even if there is no consideration in these four cases we can assume that yes there is supply and uh, but these uh, whatever conditions are given in these four cla clauses that have to be fulfilled so today we'll try to cover at least two clauses so that we are left with only um, se uh, second uh, the other two paras first two paras we'll try to cover because we are already short of time and we have already uh left with so many topics for next class first is permanent transfer or disposal of business assets where inputs input tax credit has been availed on such assets now when a particular activity or transaction will fall in para 1 that means first thing which you have to keep in mind is that whatever is mentioned in schedule 1 whatever activity or transaction is mentioned in schedule 1 you have to keep in mind that yes there is no consideration in that case so first thing which is absent is consideration when you are seeing any activity of schedule 1 or you are reading schedule 1 the basic presumption in your mind should be that consideration is not there second thing should be there in your mind is that business test is satisfied that means the activity is being carried out in course or furtherance of business it should be in of goods or services supply should be of goods or services so only thing which is absent is consideration and then we have to see which particular type of activities now will come under schedule 1 which will be considered as supply even if consideration is not there please mind my words these are the activities or transactions which will be considered as supply which will be deemed as supply even if consideration is not there only thing is that they have business, they are in course or furtherance of business and they are uh, of goods and services these activities are carried out in uh, these supplies are for goods or services so permanent transfer or disposal first condition is that there should be a disposal or transfer of business assets this 
ट्रांसफर और डिस्पोजल शुड बी परमानेंट इट शुड नॉट बी टेम्पररी ट्रांसफर दैट मीन इट शुड नॉट बी राइट टू यूज ऐसा नहीं आपने किसी को गुड्स दिए कुछ दिन यूज करने के लिए फिर वापस ले लीजिए परमानेंटली डिस्पोज दोजनेस एसेट्स ना बिजनेस एसेट्स हैज नॉट बीन डिफाइंड इन लॉन्ग बिजनेस एसेट्स क्या है डिफाइंड नहीं है तो बिजनेस एसेट्स में यू कैन यू जनरली इंक्लूड दी कैपिटल गुड्स वट एवर गुड्स यू हैव रिसीव फॉर द बिजनेस पर्पज टेंजिबल इन टेंजिबल दे आर जनरली इंक्लूडेड इन द बिजनेस एसेट्स फ्रॉम द framework of the uh, law it can be seen that yes it intends to include capital goods here in business assets this transfer should be permanent so you are transferring or disposing your business assets now most important condition most important condition is itc should have been taken on these business assets when you had purchased these assets you had taken itc on them input tax credit you had taken input tax credit on them now when you are selling those assets then that will be considered as supply even if you have not charged anything from the buyer now let us see examples dhruv gave his old laptops used in his business to his friend free of cost now this will qualify as supply because he has the only condition is that he should have taken itc when he has purchased those laptops but at the time of giving those lap laptops to his friend he has <coughs> given them free of cost a dealer of air condition permanently transfers the motor vehicle free of cost now air conditioner uh, it's not an air conditioner it, it's actually a motor vehicle a dealer of motor so please read air conditioner as motor vehicle it would be there in the study material also so you have to read air conditioner as motor vehicle so when you do the itc chapter you will come to know that motor vehicle itc is not available in certain cases uh, in fact in uh, mot the itc on motor vehicle since it is blocked so you must not have taken itc when you have purchased that motor vehicle now when you are permanently transferring that motor vehicle free of cost that transaction will not amount supply because in this case in para 1 the condition was that permanent transfer should be there of business assets provided itc has been taken at the time of purchase but here in this case since itc was blocked so we have not taken itc at the time of purchase and that is why this will not amount to supply because it is not falling in para 1 of schedule 1 so all the conditions of para 1 should be fulfilled in order to fall in this para that is permanent transfer of business permanent transfer or disposal should be there then the uh, itc should have been taken on the business assets so this will not fall under para 1 then we come to schedule 2 schedule uh, aman you can see the classes uh, you can see the recorded class if you feel that you will not be able to continue for the class you can see the recorded class para 2 says supply between related persons or distinct persons now supply between related or distinct persons supply of goods or supply of services that will be considered as a deemed supply so even if you are supplying something to your related person or a distinct person without any consideration that will be considered as supply if it is made in course of furtherance of business okay now related person this is the definition this definition i will take in the next class in detail only thing you have to remember here is that if you are supplying any goods to your related person generally what you mean by related person or what you understand by related person is something if you have any business interest in that particular business, uh, person's business or if it is an individual then its family can be considered as related person so we'll go through this definition in the next class in detail for the time being we have to see that if we are supplying any making any supply between the distinct persons then that will be covered under this clause and if we are supply making this supply without consideration that will become supply so distinct persons now first of all we are understanding what a distinct person means related person to we know theek hai there is a specific definition which says it can be your relative it can be your uh, sole selling agent or uh, the two uh, third person has a control over these the two units then these two units become two two entities become related there are so many clauses we'll do those clauses uh, in detail in next class but another term is there distinct persons so this supply should be between related persons or distinct persons and then it will become even without consideration it becomes it is deemed as supply so what is a deemed what is a distinct person distinct person is a person where a business has registration in two different states or two different union territories and then these two registrations will become distinct persons for each other 
Suppose Mr. A has a registered head office in Delhi and he has a registered branch office in West Delhi. So that will, uh, so these two entities become distinct persons. So we will be only discussing distinct persons today and this para 2 we will discuss afterwards. So I will request all of you to please go through this para 2 uh, and come prepared on next class so that we, we can understand this clause more easily. Second is establishment of distinct persons under section 25. Now, what is establishment of distinct person? Distinct persons, we said two per two, uh, one person has a registration in one state and he has, the, with the same pan, he has a registration in another state also. So, these two registrations are distinct persons. But what is establishment of distinct persons? So, a person who is registered in one state has his establishments or his um, business in other states also. So, whatever businesses he has in other states, they are establishments of that particular distinct, that person. And they are establishment of, these two units will be considered an establishment of distinct persons. Example can be, a person is registered in Maharashtra, he has a restaurant in Maharashtra. Now, this restaurant is making taxable supplies, so it is registered. But in Uttarakhand, he is, has a, he has a liquor shop. The liquor, alcoholic liquor for human consumption is not within the purview of GST. So, he must not have obtained registration for Uttarakhand. But still, it is his establishment. So, any transfer between these two units shall be considered as a transfer or supply between establishment of distinct persons. Okay. If both of them are registered, they will be considered as distinct persons. But if one of them is registered and one is unregistered, then unregistered unit will also become an establishment of distinct person for. So, with this, we come to an end to this class because we have already, it's already 9. We'll take rest of the portions in next class and before winding up, I will just have a quick look at the um, queries. Most of the queries are that we are already exceeding time, so we should wind up the class. Okay, so this is all for today's class students and in next class, we'll start from para 2 only. We'll once again go through the concepts which we have just now covered in last 5 to 10 minutes because I know that most of you would not have been able to grasp those concepts. We'll revise them once again. Okay. So, any queries if you have, you can post here. Otherwise, we'll continue in next class. Okay. Thank you so much.